Good morning, StarCraft fans. We are finally here. We're in the round of 16, Group A. And this time around, to help us with the cast, it's the return of the one and only. It's Eon Zerg. What's up, man? Hello, Nayokan. Glad to be here, man. It's, this is one of the hardest groups I remember for a past season champion. So, obviously, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here casting this one. Yeah, this is a really good group. We've got Bisu, we've got Sulky, we've got Mong. And we've got JYJ, really top tier players from all three races. You know, we've got Sulky, the previous winner. We've got JYJ, a previous winner. We've got Bisu, a legend. And then Mong, looking in to make an upset, in my opinion. I think this is a really stacked group. I don't know why Sulky wants to play JYJ, why he would swap action out. Because they had a really close series in their previous encounters in ASL. I have no idea. Sulky against JYJ makes... It makes no sense. Like, JYJ is like a master in Terran vs. Terran. He actually beat Solky with the two-star Porsche Grace the season he won the, the ASL. So, I really don't know why Solky beat him. He already beat him last season. It's like he's like doing a revenge tour now with, yeah. with JYJ. I, I don't know. what What is it? Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a really tough group, actually, for a lot of the players. You know, actually, JYJ and Bisu have some history. In previous ASLs, JYJ knocked Bisu out, I think, in the round of 16 twice he did it, if I remember correctly. Also, JYJ and Bisu formerly on SK Telecom together, so there's a lot of history there. Uh, Mong, I guess the lone wolf here, He's he was on CJ Entis. I don't think he has, you know, the most history between these players, at least in tournaments, but he's been playing well. Maybe he can make it out of this group, but I think it's going to be a really tough task for him because everybody else is just so solid. Yeah. Um, it's true that Mon didn't really make any deep run. I always remember this, like... Mon was like a super solid Terran until he met Shine one time. He was dancing on a stream. Being super happy that Shine got uh, to him in the, in the round of eight, and then like Shine destroyed him three out, and that was that was it for Mon. Like he fell off so hard that he never recovered, and now he's more like a mean player. Yeah, the the game you're referencing is of course that Circuit Breakers game or that series, the Circuit Breaker series where Soul Key, or not Soul Key, Shine ended up going for that fake drop. We saw Zealot attempt a fake drop this season, in fact, versus Light, but it was too obvious, uh, never unloading, or not never, not instantly unloading, or you would expect it to be an instant unload and Light responded by defending his natural very well. But I agree, Mong, I always have expectations for him to do well, but for whatever reason, he kind of falls apart, especially in TVZ. Like, he's one of the players that does mech switches. He had an epic game versus Soul Key on Vermeer a couple seasons ago, but other than that, he seems to get caught in the middle of his mech switch and just ends up losing really quickly. Yeah. Um, I also remember he he played this game on Herbrick. Like, he was doing so well until the, the whole lurkers oh, yeah. killed his entire army in the middle of the map. And, and then from that point, the game was just like, it was done for him. So a bit of unlucky as well, a few times. That's say, that's say, Mong is a very capable player. Like, he has the skills. Like, this guy, before all the pro gamers and everyone started on, on Africa, this, this guy was called the Flash of Africa. Like, he was extremely good. He was, like, able to make so many tanks in TBP, and he looked, like, pretty good for a long time. Um, but, yeah, now there is Light, there is Royal, there is uh, Rush, there is uh, JYJ. Uh, there is just so much quality in this pool that Mon is not really like uh, a top Terran. Well, we've talked about Mon quite a bit. What do you think about Solky here? Do you think this could be another season for him? Do you think he's got what it takes to repeat here? I mean, this is a really hard group in my opinion. Interesting subject. Um, there are players that are extremely good to win a championship one time. There are players that are extremely good to win championships over the years. And then there are players that are super, super insane that can do a back-to-back. -back. I only know two players that have done it in the 
ASLR, one of them is Flash, the other is Queen. Now, Solky doesn't really like makes me think he's one of those players. I feel like he already like he won't KSL, he won't ASL, but it was like few years apart. So mm. I don't think there is like this big amb ambition of him to do something like that, especially when I watch his stream so often. He's the kind of player that the guy plays better when he sleep three, four days without playing. He spend most of his time his time playing League of Legends. So I'm not really sure a player like that can do a back to back. Okay, well we'll see. I know you're a big fan of Soul Key. I, I think JYJ is gonna have another good performance. I mean he's he's just so good these days. Every time I watch him stream, he's playing well. When he's playing Pro League, he's doing really well. I think JYJ's got a good shot. Maybe, you know, not repeat here, but go pretty far. Uh, what about Bisu? A lot of players, a lot of foreigners really, really like Bisu for whatever reason. Do you think this could be his time? Well, first of all, I'm just grateful this guy is still, like, competing. Like, think about it. His first championship happened in uh, 2007, if I'm not mistaken. That's, like, 17 years, like... That was 17 years ago, and the guys are still competing. So I'm grateful he's doing it. I'm grateful that he's still showing a lot of skill. Um, that said, I feel like this season could be a good one for him because the maps, I feel like, apart from Troy, that doesn't really favor mechanic play. Um, most of the maps are really good for Protoss. Um, and there are not that many server left that can Hydra bust him. <laughs> So, <laughs> if he actually advanced from this group, I can see Bisu doing a very, like, big run, I okay. I, even I, to the finals, to be honest. Yeah, I, I agree with that statement, because if you're making it out of this group, you should be able to go through pretty much anybody. You've got two ASL champions. I mean, that's incredibly hard to make it through. You mentioned there's only three Zergs in the tournament, so even if you're not a Zerg fan out there you gotta be rooting for some of these zergs so that we don't have terran versus terran and terran versus protoss the whole way through because there's like eight terrans like you imagine that most of them should make it through yeah man i was i was making this joke uh, that there are four sir four sir players left in the asl and one of them is a caster so yeah we are not <laughs> doing too hot here man yeah it's pretty rough by the way, um, about this group, now you can, for a past season champion, this is one of the hardest group. Like I can only think about any other group as hard as, as, hard as this one than season t 13, mini, rain, royal, um, and I forgot who was the other player. Um, Yeah, man, I, f I actually forgot. But anyway, that season, I remember perfectly because Rain was coming back from a huge break. So it made sense for, for to pick Rain because everyone thought like, oh, yeah, he's going to be free win. He's been away from the game for, for a year or more. So it's going to be easy. Funny enough, Rain made, made it to the finals, lose to Light. Yeah. But I'm not blaming Rain for that because Light, honestly, was looking unstoppable. Um, I don't think any anyone could really like, beat Light that season. Yeah, Light was a killer. I mean, he, what did he win? 4-0 in the finals, and there was like one game that was close. It, I mean, it was it was really lopsided. But I think this season, if you look at all the groups, every single group is like a group of death. I think, surprisingly, this isn't the group of death. I think it's in group C or D or something. I don't know. They're all really strong, though. Um, but looks like we are going to be getting into the games pretty soon. I think it's going... What is the first matchup? Sulky versus Bisu, is that first? Oh, and no, we no, are going to... Sulky versus Mong. Sulky versus Mong. Well, we're going to switch over to our ASL caster screen. Get a look at Mr. Eon Zerg here with the hat on, man. I've been seeing you stream some more. Or maybe not stream, but I saw you post some YouTube videos of your games recently. Some of the titles of your videos are quite hilarious. Like, what was one recently? Hydra Bus, they're actually good. I was like, what? Of course they are. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, man. Like I, I I have nothing against like Terra or Protoss or whatever, but I imagine I put like a title like oh um, Hydra Bass is like is super weak. I like, no one is going to believe that. Yeah, nobody I when I saw that title, I was like, there's no way he, he genuinely thinks 
that this this style is weak. You've also posted a few games that are really close. Like I saw a game on Apocalypse you playing. I think it was versus Terran. It was like incredibly close. So you must be playing a lot recently. I've been like playing to to re to record on videos, so I can like um, maintain the the YouTube channel active until I come back to. To streaming maybe in summer or I don't know when we'll have like time to do some streaming. So that's the reason like it's super easy because if I play like six games per day, I just like have like almost the whole week covered, you know, so it's very, very easy to keep that going. Well, that's cool, man. We're getting a look at the stats for today. We have at the top, the stat says 2-1 history or 2-1 match history over Mong, uh, Sulky over Mong. Then we have... 6-5 Sulky over Bisu, so and then 5-5 five, five, Sulky versus JYJ, and then 3-3 three and three overall Bisu versus JYJ. So pretty much every matchup here, at least including Sulky and Bisu, is 50-50 across the board. I mean, that's 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 a lot closer than I thought it was uh, historically. Yeah, that's saying, Nayokan, this is ASL. I've been watching Bisu, Bisu stream and um, performing like really well in pro leagues. I have seen Keen like even like beating Snow. So to be honest with you, I think Bisu is in a really good shape. Like I'm so surprised Bisu is in this group with all these amazing players, but we will see. We will see. We're gonna get into game one momentarily. We're gonna take a look at player profiles. We've got our champion right here. 55% win rate versus Terran. That's pretty damn good. And look at how many games he has played. A lot of times when you see statistics in ASL, you know, you kind of take it with a grain of salt because the players only have, you know, 20, 30 games or less played. But this guy has 160 games played versus in ASL. I mean, that's, he might have the most games played. I don't think I've ever seen anybody have more games. Um, I can't really recall anyone playing that many games either. Um... Well, we've maybe maybe it's no maybe I, I i honestly don't know yeah I, I don't know either nothing's really coming to mind we're getting a looking a look at mong stats as i stated mong a really good player but for whatever reason doesn't come together in asl his tvz down in the dumps 23 percent win rate right there he does do a lot of mech switches he does get caught off guard in the middle of mech switches and like i did say he did have an epic game versus sulky a couple seasons ago on vermeer I wonder if he's going to stick with that style or if he's going to try and just play something else like complete SK Terran, you know, maybe just straight mech, but straight mech is not really like a thing these days, so. No, I feel like, and on top of that, I feel like he's more a player that loves to do like the mech transitions and he he knows well how to, how to do that, unless something crazy happened, you know, some anti-timing. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, it's Apocalypse, um, so to, to do like make a switch on Apocalypse, it's going to be difficult as well. Yeah, you can't get another, well, I guess you could get another main, but it's likely that the Zerg will already have another main at that point. So if we're to bet on a map where it's going to be not a mech switch, I think this is the map to bet on. Um, but our players are, are ready now, so let's get into game one. It is going to be Sulky versus Mong on Apocalypse. Okay, in the top middle, our champion, it is Sulky. And then in the bottom left, we have our Terran. It is Mong. So Apocalypse, it's been in the map pool a decent amount of time now. We had it, what was it, Ascension was it? It was basically previously called, similar map. What are your thoughts on Apocalypse? Um, I feel like it's, a, it's an improvement from the Ascension map. Um... I, I I honestly prefer this one, but the color sometimes is a bit confusing because like red, orange, sometimes for the minimap it's not that great for my eyes. But apart from that, I feel like it's a really good map. Um, it's very easy to spend and there are multiple places that you can put your expansion. Um, 
you can you can play very aggressive as well or you can like play more classic and doing the 2.5 hatchery build um there are multiple options on this map and i can i feel like you can also play like hydra lurker or you can go ultra say honestly it's, it's like a very solid map i i was thinking the other day that it's one of the most balanced maps uh, that there are right now yeah i actually like a lot of the maps in the ladder map pool right now including apocalypse even though it's a three-player map and can get weird um <laughs> it is tell a... me you are terrible without telling me you are terrible. <laughs> yeah I mean, is in, is any map bad for Terran other than Troy? It doesn't uh, seem I, like it. Uh, is Troy even bad for Terran, Nayokan? Well, I think it's actually not that bad if you can play some crazy styles like Two Port Wraith, but I can't play that, man. So that's that's a that's an instant veto for me. Now we've got actually it was an eleven hatch from Soul Key, ten pool, and we do have a wall going down for Mong and you know this is very trendy these days to go for the wall doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be mech or some type of tech and in fact Mong has not gotten gas so this is going to be a fast expansion we've got the actually this gas was a little later than I was expecting it to be this is like a 210 ish gas does this mean anything yeah it's a 2.5 2.5 hatchery wheel all right well 2.5 hatch you know kind of Middle of the road, not the fastest mutas, but a little bit better eco. Drone is going to see this demi wall. We'll have to keep note of that Rax not being completely ling tight at the bottom side. Sulky may be able to sneak something in later on. Hmm, I think Sulky is making only drones. It seems that way. I guess he may have thought an eight Rax could have been possible, so he went for that 11 hatch just to be careful. And there is the command center for Mong. We have two marines rallying across the map and actually mong it looks like he could commit to this okay now he's, he's coming around uh, but he's just sending the second one well there are four marines he's probably coming back yeah i mean four servants yeah he he should turn back hopefully he turns back because if he loses the three marines versus someone of soul key's caliber that's say that is high ground so yeah. he can actually like one shot these servants yeah, if he focus fires well, he can definitely knock down some Zerglings pretty quickly. Meanwhile, as expected, this is Lair. You know, Sulky's not the most wild player. I didn't expect him to go fast speed, but Lings are going to poke in and see. Five Marines. Oh, look at Mon sneak that the CB. But unlucky for him. Uh, oh, never mind. He's not meeting the Zerglings, right? So it looks like he's going to get a free to scout. Yep, he's going to come in here and get additional intel for the Terran player. And it went unscouted, like you said, by Zerg. So this is just going to be uh, full intel. He's even going to spot the third hatch, which is great. Now he knows that there's no third hatch out on the map anywhere. He doesn't have to worry about getting out there and trying to deny it. Uh, not that he could anyways, because he's going plus one weapon, but he knows where it is now. Yeah. Monk's putting some pressure. Um... Ooh, that could be dangerous. Three lanes. That is a run by. Yep, he is going to get in here, and this is a critical scout for Sulky. Now he's going to know that this was plus one weapon. He's going to see that the Academy's kind of late, actually. So his mutas will not have to deal with range for a long time. He also sees that the production is very low for Mong. I was just thinking, like, that expansion, there is, there is something strange in this game. Like, the expansion from Mon was super late. Like, the common center finished almost when the Spire started. Did actually he make engineering bay first? Uh, I don't think so. I think it, I think it may have been late because he went double depot before the command center. Mm. Maybe that was what it was. But look at this. Soul Key, where does he get this money from? He's putting down a fourth hatch before the Mutalist. Taking top right. I don't even see that many drones from, from Solky, to be honest. At least in, not in the natural. The spy is ready. And there are no there are no resources for mutas. So the, the money went to the hatchery. Yep. That is going to delay the mutas a little bit longer. So he's not going to be able to get as much damage done. And that's going to give Mong time to build up his very... Is this going to be a 5 racks? That SCV is setting up like he's going to 5 racks. There's no way, right? Like, he needs turrets. 
Okay, it is. Yeah, but look at it for him, there are no mutas. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if there were mutas here, which there could have been, they could have been racking up some SCV kills or marine kills. So a little bit lucky there that he did read this correctly and will get the turret up in the nick of time. It is a four racks, by the way. Yeah, um, plus one attack is probably going to finish uh, soon, but I don't, I don't know if, like, he's going to put that much pressure right now. Yep, the Muta's trying to find the angle, but because he didn't build Muta's instantly, he only has five right now. Actually, is this a drone cycle? So he's saturating his third base already with four hatches. Look at Solgi, he's already up in supply, which is crazy. Yeah, he went really, really heavy on Eco. Um, let's say he's not making that many Mutas. Uh, I feel like Mond, like, he, he does uh, like an opportunity to put uh, pressure on this map. Like, now he is skunk, he saw that many drones, instantly go out. Yeah, he's gonna move out. And actually, if Solki could have popped that SCV building the factory, that would have been a good pickoff to lay the tech from Mong, but instead he backs off. He lose a muta. Yeah, he did lose one. Plus one weapon is kicked in, stim is kicked in, range, if it hasn't kicked in, it's it's very close. So these mutas do have to be very careful. Muta, or Marines are gonna clear out these lings. I'm worried that Sulky may have powered too much. Um, yeah, but at the same time, Mond is not really like bringing the, bringing this, the second army. Yeah. So I feel like we're going to stay in this position for a bit. Yeah, it is seven mutas right now, but a few more mutas have been built. So he's up to something like 10 or 11. And he's going to try and just fight this army, I imagine. But like you said, once it turns into two groups of Marine Medic, it's going to be really tough to stop. That's why you see Sulky trying to pick off those Marines. I fear this is not enough medics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's two medics. He needs def... Oh, actually, there's a couple more. Four medics. That's a decent amount. Oh, now that's a good good hit right there. And knocks down three Marines in a single splash. Yeah, but he's been using that energy. Uh, so... Uh-oh. This We're going full-on Urban style. This is Mass Muta, Mass Ling. And Mong, you need to get the hell out of Dodge because he's about to get surrounded by a billion Lings. Oh, sneaky oh, he... Marine group coming to that tier base of Sulky. Yeah, but this army's dead. 100% it's gone. There's just so many Marines and Lings. This wasn't close. He's going to lose his entire ball. He did, like you said, sneak three Marines across the map that went unscouted. But even if Sulky loses some drones, he has so many behind it, I don't think it's going to make a big impact. I think he's going to make Nayokan. Oh, is he going back? He, he does have double starport, so he is building vessels, and you can no, see... No, 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 he's going to make impact. Like, look at oh. this. He's doing damage to this expansion. Oh, yeah, it, do, it did do a lot more damage than I thought. He does kill a couple drones, forces a pull, and kill some lings. It triggers all of the lings to turn around to help save the day. But Sulky he is going to end Hive. He still kept all of his mutas alive. Um. Oh, it's bio this game. Is he making Valkyries or is he going straight to Bessel? I think it's... Oh, he missed his Bessel timing. He had his starports done for a long time, but he's just now only halfway done with his science facility. So he missed his Bessel timing. There's no Armory, so there's no Valkyries. It's just going to be five racks Vessel, but everything's late. Oh my Our gosh. Lurkers out, I okay, he's going to contain this turn. Um, I mean, like... And he's making Bokers, so he doesn't even like plan to... To attack, like, I mean, he can. Oh, well, Mong knows that he's got a fight here, but it's so hard to fight into this position. Four lurkers are already set up with muta support, with no vessels. The hive is basically done. Defiler should be, or Defiler Mound should be building at this point. How is he going to stop the Dark Swarm push? You know, it was funny, like, he, if he actually, like, made two draw chips, maybe there was potential to do a counter-attack. Like, the, the vessel was, like, since facility was late anyway. Um, but yeah, there, there are not that many options now. Like, he's not breaking this. Like, it, he's going to make two vessels now. Like, what? Wait a minute. He's, he's trying, but there's, there's just, just too much Zerg, I think. Yeah, look how fast those Marines buy. The Mutas saved the day, of course, coming in. I mean, it was a good attempt from Mong there. He had to go for it. I guess he was waiting for plus one armor, I'm going to assume, and it kicked in. That's why he, he went for it. But now the Lurkers are actually just going to run in here, and this might just be GG. Wow. 
That was a master class by Salty. Yeah, like, other than the initial move out from Mong, I mean, he's just been on the back foot the whole game, and there it is, GG. And Sulky, he's going to take game one, and that was a convincing win. My God. Le le let me call the police, because Sonteran got, like, killed on Apocalypse. Yeah. I wanted to report this. Yeah, he, he got absolutely crushed. I think your idea of the dropships could have been good there was there was no vision on the left side of the map but unfortunately mong i think was waiting for those vessels but his science facility never built that's an unfortunate way to lose because i think he was doing pretty well like he was hitting his build he had that good counter a uh, good three marine run by like you said but losing those marines in the center not great do you feel like like he he could like maybe pull back that army and get like at least like close to the national and the, the maybe like because he was already doing like the counter attack right like he already like he validated that move like it was going to work no matter what so yeah i'm not sure exactly what he should have done i mean in retrospect clearly he should have been closer to his his natural right but at the same time you want to be a little bit far forward because you want to at least threaten a counter attack uh, but he just didn't, I guess he didn't scan and didn't see that there were this many links. Of course, Sulky did a great job to hide the links. And, you know, once this fight happens, or once you see this, you can't run away. You got to stand here and fight. And unfortunately, uh, Mong just clearly didn't have enough. Because, like, he didn't even, like, kill that many mutas with that army yeah. either. Like, if at least you lose the army, but you lose, like, he, you kill some mutas, like, it could be, like, a body trade. Um, that say, I feel like, just like with the science facility mistake, that was it for him anyway. Yeah, well, we'll be going into a break. It's going to be Bisu versus JYJ, and then we'll be back in just a couple moments. Whoops. Okay, we are back. 
thought we were going to have some type of countdown or something, but we're just instantly back. We're going to be getting into Bisu versus JYJ in just a second. You see Sulky silencing the crowd right there. He's already taken down Long. Now we've got a PVT, and look at that win rate. Almost 60% versus Terran. Yeah. I, I'm surprised, to be honest, there. the stats are that good. Like, I always hear, like, he's terrible against Terran. Oh. <laughs> I also am surprised that it's that that strong because I think historically, I guess I'm I guess I'm wrong here, but I remember in the olden days, you know, Bisu was like a carrier type of guy, and I, I think his versus Terran win rate was, you know, much lower compared to his PVZ, for example, in PvP. So it is surprising to see it's that high. Now JYJ, eight and thirteen versus Protoss overall, thirty eight percent win rate. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna be that accurate though because jyj has been a killer the past few seasons i think that seems a, a bit low maybe he played versus protoss a lot in the first few seasons he played in asl not too sure what to think of that stat but it is what it is yeah um let's say last two seasons i feel like he didn't really like face that many protoss players so um, there is always this like this said in the community that he can really like play Terran versus Protoss. Like he got lucky to win that ASL because of like the Terran versus Ser matchup. Um, but I have seen like him doing very solid games against Protoss as well. So he's very scary. Yeah, he's definitely really, really good. He's definitely if you're if he's not on your radar as a Terran player, you need to look this guy up. I mean, I've seen him just kill very good players with very minimal moves on the ladder our players are ready though so let's get into our game again apocalypse this time bisu versus jyj so in the top middle this time it's our protoss it is bisu and instead of on the left side now on the right side we do have jyj now tvp we've been slight changes in the meta of not meta yeah, yeah, meta of TVP. We've been seeing 11 gas openers. That gives Terran players the option to get out a quick vulture. We've also been seeing Terran players go into 4-fact slash 5-fact to prevent these big gateway man busts. And because of that, I wonder if Bisu will go for something different here. You know, in theory, something like Fast Arbiter is good versus 4-fact or 5-fact. So we'll see if he actually whips it out. But look at this. Forward pylon for him. So he wants to bring it to JYJ right from the get-go. Yeah. Look at that guy's sign, man. You're damn right. You got to see it live. I haven't even gotten to see it live, man. I got to go back to Korea at some point to check it out. Yeah, man. Anyway, God bless you. and um, Hope you, you live, like, very long. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, was that? A, was that a? I think that was a Jadong fan, which is kind of kind of strange there. But uh, a Jadong sign in the crowd. JYJ, what's he doing? He's not building a barracks. No, don't tell me this is 14 CC, Eon Sarg. Because if this is 14 CC, the game's over. Please. Oh my God! I can't believe this. Well, maybe that's why he's got a 38% win rate versus Protoss. Maybe you were right. Those people saying he was lucky to dodge TVP because he is he is in deep trouble. If you thought it was hard to micro Marines versus Zealots with no SimCity, how's he going to micro SCVs versus Zealots with no SimCity? I have conflicted like the feelings with this one because, I first of all, I love this strategy he's doing. It's just so unlucky that Bisu <laughs> is doing one game like forward like this. Well, the, the barracks is set up in a cute position right next to the command center. He can build a depot right next to it to complete the wall. The, whoa, whoa, what's that? Zell went back to his main. Zell popped out and went rallied into his main. So that what? buys JYJ a couple more seconds. It's just still like, now you can like, I, 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 I can see the future already. If this, like, does any damage, he can just, like, proxy the pylon and, you know, make proxy robot and just, like, demolish yeah. him. Yeah, he definitely could do that. This probe is not doing as much damage as I thought, but JYJ, 
I guess, actually, he should be anticipating this move. Uh, you I know, think I want more Soulblight to, to block, uh, to block the, the entrance. Yeah, he could build another depot to go for a full block. Oh, that SCV's dead. Even though this Zealot was, you know, built forwardly, because it kind of screwed around uh, with the rally a little bit, it does buy JYJ a little bit of time. But this is the problem going 14 CC versus something like this. You can see he's already racked up, what is it, three SCV kills? That's a really good surround on the Zealot, but the Zealot is still gonna live. Yeah, man, these Zealots, they, they are so strong, like, he can't take the damage. Yeah, and by the way, there's the proxy robo, like you said, and also there's no factory. It hasn't even started for JYJ, so he is way far behind. I don't think he saw the second probe come. So he, remember, he killed the first probe, so he may be thinking that there's nothing actually forward here. Oh, he misses it just barely. And this will make that pylon like so close. Like, I honestly think he's going to scout that. I, I yeah, he might, the goon might push him back. And I actually think that's a battery with the with the pylon now. Oh, JYJ, he has to see it. He, he's he's got to check this out. Otherwise, it's it. Okay, now he sees it. Is that a battery at the front? Or a cannon? Okay, battery, okay. Yeah, you gotta pull. <laughs> you can't wait. Once the robo's completed, Reaver's coming. He, he can't. He, he actually... Uh, it's two Zeros and one Dragoon. Yeah, the SCV surround was actually really good. But look at the battery clutching it, healing up those the Zealot really well. However, the Bunker might actually finish. He's not focusing that SCV. Yeah, but the Marines, now you can, there are there. no Marines. They can't get there. The Zealot is actually almost dead, by the way. Uh, he might make it in. He did, I can't believe it, but he's gonna lose so many SCVs. Um, does he have enough DPS? I don't oh, know. Wait, think... Yeah, he, oh, he lost two guns. I can't believe JYJ is actually going to hold this. The support bay is done. But if there's an SCV pull to kill this pylon, the Robo or the Reaver should not get out. So actually, look at the supplies now. 25 to 21. I realize JYJ's eco is, you know, not great, but he's got double command center. Um, This is uh, this is so problematic for Bisu. Um... It's true his eco is probably better right now than than JYJ's eco, but at the same time it's two command centers. Yeah, it's two command centers. The Marines can beat the beat the coon, by the way. Not two of them. But now three Marines can definitely win. I can't believe that we even got to this state. I thought once the zealot of the forward gate was built versus a 14cc, the game's over. But the seat the Sim City that JYJ came up with. Really fantastic. I can't I can't even believe he got that bunker completed. Why didn't Bisu focus those S that at least that SCV building the bunker? I think the, the big problem here is that he made the pylon just yeah. way too close to the natural man. Like he put it in the in the, the tier expansion at least and it will be safe, but like it's it's almost like close to the common center. <laughs> yeah, it was extremely close and now a beast who, of course, not out of it for sure. He, this is definitely playable, but his Nexus is like not even done yet. He doesn't have a Reaver yet because his Robo just finished. By the time the Reaver gets across the map, JYG is going to have turrets. He's not going to have the most units, of course, because he's on one factory, but he should have more than enough to fend this off. So, uh, there, there is like no siege, right? Like, uh, I, I don't I don't think there is siege. Yeah, if. If he has siege, like it just finished or it's just about to finish, but here comes that reaver. What is it? One zealot, one reaver loaded up in the shuttle. You can see, of course, JYJ knows it's coming. That's why he has that tank back. Turret, first turret coming down. He needs to set up a big turret ring. Apocalypse can be kind of tricky to deal with reavers. You know, it's similar to Tau Cross in the sense that there's like just so much area to drop. So he does need to be careful here. He can do damage with this, uh, with this reaver now. Okay. Oh, never yeah. mind. No, there are two tanks. Okay. Yeah, not that much anti-air though, just two, two marines, but he's not going to commit. Now with a th three tank, yeah, for sure, this can't work anymore in Bisu. Now he's going to have to try and play out of the position that he's in. His nexus is finally done. Turret going down in the mineral line. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. If it was a snow, I could see like, you know, some damage yeah. coming, but like, <laughs> this is not a snow, this is Bisu. 
Um, uh, yeah, I see some really finding anything. Um, it's two bases against two bases. Um, the thing is like, from this position, JYJ can just like go mass factories and kill Bison. Yeah, now that it's gotten to this point in the game, JYJ's at a massive advantage. Even supply, or actually slightly ahead in supply for Terran. Better SCV count, you know, better eco. This Reaver needs to get SCV kills. Oh, it no. actually... No. What happened? What? It didn't actually kill any SCVs. The Reaver... And look at this, he's saving every single SCV. He's gotten one kill on that Reaver, and it's been unloaded, what, two or three times? Oh, he's, is he stuck? Oh my gosh, so it got one kill, lost the Reaver, lost the Zealot. The shuttle is basically, you know, 50%. It's actually, is it gonna die? Okay, at least it gets away, but it's super low. Um, two shuttles. Yeah, two. I'm, I'm not a fan of this. He's building so many shuttles at a point in the game where he needs, he needs units or he needs another Nexus or something. And not the Nexus, I, I was thinking about more gateways. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, he needs more gates, but, like, if he builds another Nexus, you know, maybe he can get some more Econ and try and pray that he can uh, win with better Econ in the mid-game. But a shuttle, I don't, I don't know what this is going to get you with this. I don't think he can do any more damage with the Reaver. He's going to go gateways now and Nexus. I think it's JYJ knows his position. He knows... Yeah. That he doesn't even like need to to attack or to over defend too much right now. Like, look at this. He's just like producing factories, and I'm pretty sure that the base that Bisu is making is dead. Yeah, this could be a seven fact. This could be like a plus one seven fact timing and just go. And he has double add on here, so he's gonna have a million tanks. It could also just be four fact into expansion. Of course, yeah. JYJ hasn't gotten across the map to scout at all, so he doesn't know what Bisu's actually doing. Uh, and it looks like this is actually going to be an expansion. Yeah. To be honest, I don't blame him. Like, yeah. his position is so good that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, also, you know, he doesn't know how good he has it. Like, he he killed the Robo. Obviously, you're feeling good about that, but he doesn't know that Bisu cut a lot to go for that proxy Robo. So no, no fault for him to take this third base. It's a safe move here. And but I okay, can, as a Terran player, when you lose all of that, on top of that, you lose the river as well. Like, yeah. you know, the position is good. Yeah, it should be good. <laughs> you hope it's good. Uh, we've got another... Well, at least you are a tunnel system. Yeah. Yeah, or me, where you can't macro. And uh, you're actually just behind somehow. Protoss has like three quarters of the map. But JYJ, a little bit better than myself, he's going to put down that command center in just a second. Meanwhile, Bisu trying to keep the units at... Oh, did he find an opening? Oh! Of course not. I see. Oh, did he get the hot pickup? I think I think he actually got hit. Oh, wait, no, 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 like this. Wait. Okay. That was good to But don't lose the shuttle. Yeah, you can't lose the shuttle. And this time, the shuttle actually survived with... What? what? Oh, no. He took an additional hit. I was going to say he survived with most of his health, but that's not the case. And actually... That bought Bisu some time. JYJ has not put down a command center. He hasn't put down more factories. Is he really going to attack with just four fact production? Oh, this is so crazy. It's moving like this. Like, yeah. what are you aiming for? Like, this is crazy. Yeah, I. This is one of those moves where you're attacking, but you're also expanding at the same time. So you're kind of an in between style right there's a lot of stuff for bisu and it's high ground this was a mistake i imagine oh the goliath does not pick off the shuttle the reaver went okay it does fire and he gets a huge shot off and jyj he just threw away his entire army oh my god what just happened like i should i apologize to our doses like he's right he's right well the reaver Okay, it is actually, well, I guess it's a, a second reaver right here. And, okay, I guess they trade army for army, but that was definitely not good for Terran because Protoss has a third base up and running. And he's also got the full Sim City. <laughs> Are you serious? He just waltzes in, gets the vulture through the pylon wall. Um, I mean, Nayokan, um, that move, like, 
it was not good. Like you lose many, many tanks for that. Um, yeah. I, I honestly don't like he even a scan and he is still committed. Like I what he's seeing that we don't see. Because no. like he did a scan, he saw the whole army and he is still committed to that. Why like, why not retreat? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like he said, he killed two reavers and he thought like, okay, well this guy committed so much. He he can't possibly have that much, but he did, and also it was uphill. You know, maybe I could understand it if it was even ground, but to attack uphill like that, that was that was very risky, and he got punished oh, don't immediately. Commit. Don't commit, don't commit. Yeah, yeah, definitely don't want to commit that shuttle. That would be another lost Reaver. He does save it and backs off, and Bisu is going to take a fourth base. Somehow, JYJ supply, you know, it's, it's okay, 100 versus 125. It's still very low. Okay, well, he's got the Temple Archive, so actually Storm is going to be on the field pretty soon. Um, that said, now you can, um, Bisu position is still no ideal for a Protoss versus Terra match. Yeah, it's still, it's still not the greatest. JYJ definitely has a shot in this game, but it's, it's going to be tough. He is just now getting his, his science facility, so he doesn't have the powerful 2-1 upgrades. JYJ has built so many turrets here, man, just to defend this, this one shuttle. Bisu is doing a good job cleaning the map. I don't really see that many mines, so yeah. this is going to be great when he he commits to do a big, big attack or a big, big uh, army move. Yeah, so for JYJ, I, I think the win condition here is to slowly try and get top right, get that as your fourth base, slowly get bottom right, and then try and make a massive attack to bottom left at some point, assuming Protoss tries, or assuming we get to that point in the game where Protoss you know, takes bottom left. We see the first few Templars being uh, built, so we're going to have Storm drops on the menu pretty soon. Now you can call me crazy, but I don't see enough tanks to to really defend that tier base from JYJ. I feel like the, the amount of silos Bisu is making, he can he can bust that position. He might be able to, but JYJ... Oh! oh what is That's a huge no. hit. Kills so many probes there, and I think Bisu's probe count was already quite low, so that was a massive catch. And you give a break to Bensu, man? Like, he was already recovering! And this happened! Yeah. yeah, he lost like 10 workers there. JYJ does lose a handful of vultures, but that was a really nice move right there from JYJ. We had just talked about how Bisu had done such a good job to clear the mines, but that one mine was not cleared, and it had the connection of all time. Another dro or a drop coming in here, he's gonna shut that down. He's actually, I think, in a tank drop top left. Vulture drop, okay. Uh, Bisu is ready for this. Oh, is he just gonna counter? This could this could be devastating. He's taking a decent amount of eco yeah. death. Oh, he's eating mines. If this doesn't work, Bisu could be under threat of being immediately countered. Look at the tank count. It's actually pretty high. The Sim City is pretty good. A lot of turrets. Bunker, depot. No, he's gonna get his shuttles focused down. Actually, actually the shuttles did unload quite well. Good storm right there. But look at the tank count at the bottom. Oh, uh, maybe retreat. Don't lose the whole army, please. Yeah, he did lose a lot of stuff. Oh, more Templars coming in. If the storm, if he can get off another storm on those juicy tanks right there. There he goes. He gets a couple tanks. Now it's just four tanks remaining. Bisu has a lot of stuff here. The third has been breached. SCV's dying left and right. The storm connects again. Oh, wow, man. That contract was the better thing to happen to Bisu, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it forced him to go for a counter, and now he's knocking on this command center. But if we look at supplies, JYJ still very close to even. You gotta imagine that these goons will die eventually. Yeah, yeah, but that was a lot of eco damage. Yeah, like even like yeah, he he can really oh. make that army very fast now. Actually, the goons are gonna get the command center. I didn't think they were gonna get it. I thought the tanks would be there in time, but the command center is. So close oh, to dying. Like, okay, this is probably like I, I don't see like how do you recover from this one? Yeah, this is devastating I, damage. I had the feeling I have said that a few times already in this game. Yeah, and those drops that were sent on the left side by JYJ, it seems like they've been cleaned up. There's still a lot of goons here, man. You can't just unseize these tanks. There goes one tank. Wow. This was this was a crazy game, very chaotic game, back and forth. 
does he did he load up the vulture? Okay, he did. He's back for round two here. Try and get some more probe kills, and he needs this. He's gonna shut down this base. And load back up. Yeah, but, good job with the dropship. Um doing a lot of eco damage, especially after losing that many workers to a mine early on. Yeah. Um and like you say, the supplies are super close to my surprise, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know how JYJ has kept the supply so even. 120 to 110. Terran can win fights like that. Terran also had two armories. I didn't notice if plus two weapons done yet, but once that kicks in, gonna be hitting really hard. Oh, a storm drop could be devastating. Oh, he transferred the wrong way! Oh, I guess he transferred the right way. He actually ended up saving them. Um, so Bisu is mine out in the main yeah. already? Bitch. Almost mine out? Mine out in the main. Natural, well his natural is not going to be mine out because remember he got that late. But JYJ, uh, his natural I guess should be close to being mined out. His third base is just now coming up. Bisu's only up 10 supply. If, if JYJ can snipe a shuttle that's full of Templars, that would be a huge win for him. But as I say that, here comes another shuttle bomb. And... He gets a decent amount of SCVs. Okay, that was good. That was really good, actually. And but this... I don't think you can you can break this position. No, you, if he goes in here, you're basically hoping that you're dragging a mine in to try and connect because that's there's so many. He would lose zealots unbelievably quick if he went for an attack. Meanwhile, Protoss is going to st start setting up for bottom left. Fifth base going to be coming up pretty soon. Still mass shuttles for Bisu. Now, actually, Bisu might go for it now. Now that he saw the vultures move out of position, and here he goes. Uh, wow. So many mines on the glass. They need to focus down the shuttles. Zealots get on top of some of the tanks. Good D-Matrix right there. Good storm. Is there enough tanks, though, is the question. The vultures are going to die bottom left. There is a tank at the top. Actually, there's two tanks at the top side, and it does seem like JYJ may hold this. Maybe? Maybe not. Oh, I, this is a lot of damage. I, I guess he's going to hold, but he does take a lot of damage, like you said. The Vultures did deny bottom left. I feel like Bisu already killed like, at least like 25 workers or more. Yeah, they did, and this Vulture drop coming in again. Just such a nuisance. He doesn't have anything to actually kill that dropship. He doesn't have a Stargate to build a Sarah or anything. He's just... It's always happens, man. It's just, you ever, you say something's not happening, and then it happens. Like, the Vulture was <laughs> hiding forever, and then gets caught by Zealots. Uh, is it going to be another Storm drop here? No, not yet, at least. He's going crazy with the drops. Um, that saying, I can, um, it's still not a new expansion for Bisu here. Yeah, he's actually not mining that much. Like, yes, he's up a base. Actually, he's up even three, uh, two bases. But JYJ is still holding on somehow. Vultures. That That's a lot of vultures. Uh, that's actually so Oh, whoa, 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 The storm could be amazing. Whoa, whoa. Ooh, ooh. Okay. okay. That may have broken the camel's back there. Now it's a 50 supply lead for Bisu. Econ is really down in the dumps now for JYJ. He's not even mining his third base gas, by the way. And the problem is, like, you don't really want to be making a CBs at this yeah. stage of the game. 21 minutes is just yeah. terrible. And as the observer pointed out, JYJ is not mining his nat gas either. So the amount of tanks he can build very limited he like can't even build vessels either because of how limited his gas is so it's like pure on vulture man is what he's relying on to try and get back in this game uh, this is this is painful for jyj now because he need to recover first of all he need to recover a bit the eco so and then he need to proceed to to take a new expansion i don't think he can even like make an attack yeah, and I don't even think he can make a command center. I think he needs to float either his main command center or a natural command center. Probably the natural command center. If you're not going to mine the gas there, you might as well just float it up there and try and get the high ground and hold. Uh, more Vulture is going to be sent out towards bottom left, but he's not going to catch the probe, at least not just yet. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, if I was Bisu, I would probably just like give priority to take a new expansion. That would that would that would be my priority. Yeah, I think Bisu's thinking that he stormed enough SCVs that he can probably just win the game. But yeah, if you just take a fifth base, that'd be great. By the way, the shuttle ended up loading up that probe, and now he's just elevatoring it over to bottom left. So that's going to be a nexus that goes down. JYJ is going to get onto the high ground. His tank count is okay. It looks like it's at ten. But nothing really to write home about. I still haven't seen a floated command center just yet, so I'm not too sure what the goal is by sitting here. He does have plus three weapon. Okay, there's the command center. And uh, he has um, good energy on the vessels, so he can he can yeah he has like four D matrix. Man, you can. Yeah, we could definitely see Protoss blunder here if Protoss just tries to bulldoze their way in here into a 4D matrix. Here comes another shuttle drop. Mine. Ooh, I don't think it died. This is just so, this is so hard for JYJ. Like it just takes him forever to get a base. He has no priority out on the map. Anytime he makes a move with his vultures, he's risking getting immediately countered. But it seems like he may actually be able to get this fourth base up and running. However, Bisu is acting like he's going to make an attack. That is a lot of shuttles. Yeah, but that is scary, you know, you can, I, I honestly, I would not like to, to see Bisu like fighting this army, like at least face, face to face like that. Well, here we go. The shuttle, one of them gets taken down. There's the D matrix that you talked about. Good storm right there. Hit some of the tanks. A lot of the vultures get hit. Look at the supply of Bisu went from max down to 120. I still think Bisu is going to be able to plow through, but this was a very close attack. The tanks are just doing so well with the plus three and the vultures. Uh, now you can I see what? this attack is going to be whole. How, how did he hold this? What was his max versus 130? The power of plus three, D matrix, and mines. I can't believe it. if JYJ gets this fourth base like fully saturated, he's actually not out of it. Bisu, like I said, does not have the biggest econ. Yeah, I, did, I didn't really like the idea of facing the army face to face like that. Um, I was expecting something else like trying to, you know, like force the army to be moving on multiple places because now JYJ is forced to take a four expansion, but now it comes to this situation. Let's say Bisu Ego is still better than JYJ Ego. So maybe in the trade oh. war, maybe it's better for him. Something happened by the way, because JYJ just shot down to 68 supply. Was there a drop that we missed or something? Now it's 115 to 68, uh, but something clearly happened to JYJ supply, but he does at least have his fourth base up and running now. Bisu does have his fifth base decently saturated and JYJ is he gonna be on the move no no I, I think he can't he the priority has to be like set up the four base um as you see there are no even that many NCBs yeah another bomb another bomb Templar that was a good split somehow manages to uh, save all of them for now at least Shuttle doesn't get taken out. Wow, I can't believe he saved every single SCV there. Uh, and it is still just full-on shuttles. There's no switch to arbiters or carriers, anything like that. Bisu, yep, that's up and running. The tanks, oh, well, not the tanks, the vessels. They may have energy again in a moment to have all those D-Matrix. Okay, there we go. Now the SCV is going to get taken down. By the way, now you can to be a Protoss versus Terra uh, matchup. Um... I feel like Bisu Eco is is so low. Like his income, like he's getting the income, like is, is so low. Like I, I ask myself if he doesn't have like the ideal worker production in, in this game. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the ideal number you're looking for is because there are players that play with like 55 probes. Somebody like Vest, he really likes to go low probe count. Then I see games where. Motive, for example, I just casted him the other day. He's playing with like almost 80 probes. Like there seems to be not a set amount of probes that you should have. It's like a varying amount. But I agree, 
Bisu did seem to have a low probe count, but now that he's near max again, I guess he's got more than I initially thought. And this is going to be another massive attack on the fourth base. D Matrix come in as expected, but the tank count you can see not nearly as it, as high as it was a couple minutes ago. It's at what five or six just now. Really not that much, but he somehow keeps a lot of the units from not getting into the fourth base. But a few goons do actually make it in. Oh wow. Bisu, Bisu is playing with the fans never just here. Yes. <laughs> Bisu is like, oh my god, I don't know, I don't know, it's going to kill me. Um, I feel like that was a good move, Ooh. doing eco damage again. Yeah, and he might get the command center, there's no STV to repair, there's another Templar here to hit another storm. Uh, he's gonna get another tank, he can focus down these STVs now. Can he get the command center, it's so low, I think he's gonna get it. And with that falling, you got to imagine, if Terran comes back from this, they need another 50 supply to 150. There it is. Bisu, he's going to take it, but he had to work for that. After having a great build order in the beginning, JYJ somehow <laughs> staved it off. Looked like he was in a favorable position, but that four-fact timing, man. Why? Why did he make that move? Yeah, if you look at Bisu's face, it's like, oh my god, what I'm doing to myself. <laughs> Yeah, he knows that that should have never gotten to that point. It should have ended with the Zealots, it, really. But the Robo, I guarantee you, the next time that happens, he'll definitely build it a little farther back, like you were saying, so it doesn't get picked off. <laughs> well, we can't even, like, oh, my God. Yeah, well, either way, regardless of, you know, the openers, the game really did deliver. It was very back and forth. Both players really dealing crippling blows to each other the vulture drop this mine hit right there got like 10 workers look at Bisu's worker count it's 61 to 43 if JYJ just macros from here doesn't make that big attack or actually I think the big attack already happened so actually JYJ was still in a good spot uh yeah and he's that. dropping and killing more workers as yeah. well yeah you were talking about how Bisu looked like he had a low worker count 38 you know, I'm no Protoss player, but I guarantee you 38 is not the number you're looking for. But this was, um, I guess, the game swinging move here where Bisu comes in with a massive attack and takes down a lot of the tanks and the command center. I don't know how, how he made that work, to be honest. Yeah, because the there were not instant storms, but then there was like, I think another shell comes in in just a second and hits a lot of these tanks in the back. There's the first storm, but there's another Templar that comes in in a moment and hits a lot of the other tanks. Yeah, the, these two bad boys right here, watch them. They get a couple more tanks. The Vultures try and pick off the Templars. They get a couple, but they don't get the ones with energy. Yeah, that, honestly, this is a beautiful attack. Like, it's, it's just really impressive he made this attack work. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, and he caught some trailing SCPs in the beast's face. <laughs> he can't believe that that game went like that. Oh my god. This is funny. <laughs> uh, well, that was an exciting game. Hopefully we can have an, another exciting game in our winner's match. As you see, it's going to be Visu versus Sulky. We're going to be going into the, uh, the chair commercial now, which means we're going to be cutting to our caster screen. Right here, Eon Zerg, he's back. Uh, so, as I stated in previous casts, this cast brought to you by Starcast TV. You know, Cruiser got us the rights to actually co cast the Afrika stream and post it on our YouTube. So, if you're enjoying the cast, you should definitely consider becoming a Patreon supporter or YouTube supporter. And if you want to rewatch the VOD, either watch it on Afrika or YouTube. Also, Starcast does a lot of other tournaments. I just wrapped up casting Starcast TV Season 1. Just started StarCast Season 2. And then there's going to be another uh, tournament coming up soon, which I think a lot of foreigners will like. Uh, you should definitely check that out when that's getting uh, released. But uh, yeah, these games so far, Eon Zerg, been quite exciting. Dominant game in Game 1, Sulky versus Mong, and then back and forth in between Bisu and JYJ. What do you think about our winner's match, Bisu versus Sulky? This is going to be hard, Nayoken. Um I feel like no, sir... No sir actually likes to face Bisu. He this guy can demolish you. He this guy this this guy can actually like question whatever like why I'm playing sir. So yeah. I feel like Yeah, I feel like Sulky against Bisu 
it's a it's a really good matchup. And and honestly, I'm scared for for Solky. Um, because Solky sometimes he he tries to to do the strategies that and I'm not really sure like they're a good match against uh, Bisu. Okay, well, we'll be looking for that. Yeah, historically, Bisu, obviously, I think his best matchup is P PBZ, just in general. So it is going to be a tough matchup for Sulky. I know Sulky plays a lot of varieties, a variety of styles in CVP. I remember Machine talking to me about how Sulky is one of the few players that plays, like, really low drone count um, styles. But we're actually going to be going into a break. Oh, no, we're not. I got debated by the casters. I thought we were going into the chair commercial. But um, when you say doesn't fare well versus bisu style like what style are you talking about from sulky um pretty much that like let's say like hydra aggression on five hatcheries or uh, some muta play um you know like the five mutas uh, into a scorch like these days protos players they have a new build honestly it's not new but it's like the two stargaze build into into Citadel Silots, but there is a new optimization that the Silots speed comes so quick that, yeah, I feel like the, it just uh, it auto shut down the, the Muta strategies. So, um, on top of that, Bisu multitasking and micro with Silots and gay yeah, openings, they are hard. So, but we are going to have break, guys. BRB.
All right, we are back, and we're going to be getting into our winner's match. We are past the best of one phase. It is now going to be best of three here. Solki versus Bisu, that's our winner's match. I think Bisu, despite winning his game versus JYJ, needs to get it together here versus Solki because I don't think Solki is going to make the blunders that JYJ did. No, for sure. And um, again, sir, you can really make that kind of blunder either. Like, if you skip like two cannons and you know the sir is doing a hydra boss you're probably dead so yeah you are going to get punished instantly if you if you miss something like that like late cannon and the sir is making mutas well you are dead um, yeah there are many things that the bisu need to be on top of um but bisu ppc is amazing so i have no doubt he's going to do well yeah, you were talking about this new Zealot timing into, what was it, Double Stargate? We'll see if he actually pulls that out. We get a look at what the bans are. We actually see a Troy ban from Solki. I know a lot of the Zergs don't like that map, at least from what I've seen in the Pro League games. So no shocker to me to see that. And then Radeon banned from Bisu. I guess he doesn't want to play on a big macro map like that versus Solki. But that does let Blitz, Citadel, and Retro through. By the way, interesting he actually banned Radeon. Like, in my opinion, Radeon is like a really good uh, Protoss map. I mean, I was thinking the same thing. Like, okay, I'm not a Protoss player here, but doesn't Citadel seem like it's a little harder than Radeon, in my opinion? Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, our players are ready, so let's get into our winner's match. Of course, it's Bisu versus Sulky. First map will be Blitz. Okay, in the top right, we have Bisu. And in the bottom right, we've got Solki. So Blitz, an interesting map, a two-player map. I'm sure you've played on it a decent amount now that it's in the ladder. What do you think about Blitz? Uh, I don't like it. It's super difficult to make walls for 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 Sir. Um, it's uh, it's very difficult as well to to take expansions. It's very difficult to cover uh, with Lurkers uh, the defensive size of the map, so uh, it's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really a big fan of this map. Um, but if you're a Protoss player, I imagine you will probably like this one. Um, if you take out like a close suspension, you know, like the route to, to get into that position is super hard, so you can defend that with few High Templars or you can say the same about like the front side as well, like putting few lurkers. Uh, but there is a storm, so you can always like use a storm to clean the side units. So yeah, I'm not really a big fan of this map now. You can. Yeah, it does seem like it could be difficult for Zerg. You know, actually TVZ, I have a, I find it to be a lot better than other two-player maps, at least for for myself. We've got a gateway opener from Bisu. We're getting a look at the stats: top three PVZs of all time. 58% win rate for Bisu, and meanwhile, top three Zerg versus Protoss win rate of all time is Solki. So both players very high up there in terms of win rates in this respective matchup. I think this was an overpool for Solki. And look at this, yeah. drone over at mid left. Maybe he's a scouting for um, for Prozzi. It does look oh. like it. The the pat. Uh, no, this is this going. This drone is going too far. Is this a proxy hatchery? Yeah, what is this? Is he gonna take the mineral only? No way. Uh, he is. Okay, well. I don't know what this is. <laughs> What's this? I mean, Bisu's gonna know, like, there's a hidden hatch somewhere. He's gonna scout the entire map, so he's, he's obviously gonna find it eventually, but what do you think this is for? I mean, aggression, Nayoken, like, what what, what, what can be? Like, he's not going yeah. to hide from that position. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Uh, it's going to be, like, some kind of Sterling all-in, or yeah. even, like, to, uh, to Hydra all-in, you know? Like... Yeah, I, I was immediately thinking that this is going to be a Speedling all-in, but I guess it could... Is he really going to try and act like he's... This is his first hatch? Like, you know, this is not... C or B rank. I can't imagine Bisu thinking that this is his first hatchery. 
That say Bisu doesn't know where the hatchet is. He's assuming where is it. Yeah. Well, the the Lings do deny the probe from getting in again. Did Bisu actually see gas with his probe? Right, well, either way, the Lings are allowing the probe to come back in for another scout. So now he's going to see gas. And I think Protoss is kind of thrown for a loop here. We don't see a zealot moving towards the left side to scout. We don't see an additional probe scouting the left side. This is speed, by the way. Yeah, but Bisu, Bisu have seen that Sork is making Cerulis no stop. He knows something is up, like something. There is aggression coming, 100%. Yeah, something weird is going on. And by the way, that building, is that a forge? Or, okay, it is a forge. I thought it might have been a cybernetic. So it is going to be a forge. I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to get these zealots to move out and then counter immediately with the links. Kind of like what ty did versus jadong like oh you sent mutas across the map well guess what here comes some some zerglings this time um yeah but as a product player you are going to make cannons that's that, say that is true that, that natural is supposed yeah the, he's he, look he, he's baiting he's like dude these are all the things i have haha <laughs> you don't need any cannons but here we go speed's about to kick in and hello the cannon just now started here it goes. Speed speed is mo yep, just now kicks in, and now this cannon is under threat, and all of a sudden, Bisu's in big time trouble. Also, remember, there's only a single pylon here. If the pylon gets focused down, which it is, he's gonna be not able to produce anything. Uh, what? I, I think, think that's over. it. Need to hold the seals, GG. <laughs> what? That was such a weird build. Bisu, did he really think? That there, that was the. F He's stunned. I'm stunned. He really did believe, I guess, that that was the only hatch, but it was hidden across the map. He's of course watching that replay, trying to figure out what the hell went wrong there. No, no, okay. It's impossible. He he believed that it was the only hatchery. It's just impossible. Well, I, I feel the same way. Like it has to be impossible. But why no, no, are but his you, zealots... go, you, go, you go with a worker and do a scout that is all it's over, but you see the timing. That it's yeah. that it's one that is one hatchery missing. Like yes. the, the, the thing is like he probably assumed the hatchery is in the bottom left of the map. Uh -huh. Um you know like the time the timing is quicker for the service uh, okay. if mm -hmm. it is that far. Yeah, that makes sense then. I guess he wasn't expecting it to hit as fast as it did. Like the cannon was what was it, like sixty five out of a hundred? So if you factor in the distance between bottom left to top right, you know, maybe maybe that was the case. But still it was I don't know, those zealots also felt really far forward, but either way, you know, put a point on the board for Team Zerg, because Sulky takes down Bisu very quickly, and we're just going straight into game two. Citadel is our next map, four-player map, and if Bisu loses here, we'll have Sulky out first, and Bisu waiting in the deciders match. Okay, in the top right, down 0-1 in our series. It is Bisu in, in top left getting a first scout. It's going to be Soul Key. Um, I'm thinking like Bisu, Bisu saw so, like Soul Key making certain strong stop. It surprised me he was still like playing aggressive after like scouting yeah. that. Yeah, like I, I don't mind his zealots being a little far forward but they like they were so deep like he had no chance to retreat it was just kind of weird that they were out that quickly but like you said he may have thought that the hatchery was bottom left the probe died very quickly right like it died to the eight links pretty quickly so he didn't really confirm much but we do have bisu forward pylon of course and he is gonna get lucky here and find sulky first and what is, is this a nine pool it is a nine pool so good, good scout for Bisu here. He's going to to be making forage this game. Um, scouting the nine pool like this early on is always great. Um, that say, on um, this map did he miss? It's a, it's a big map, so no, he didn't miss. He's just gonna oh, is he gonna try and cannon rush? There's no forge. He may just be trying to block the hatchery but there is no hatchery coming anytime soon uh, okay 
Yeah, here comes the drone, but that's not not for a hatch just yet. Sulky, don't tell me that he's hiding a hatch again. Like th this is gonna be for a hatchery, right? Oh, he just sent it to bottom left, and now he's coming back. Oh well, probe's gonna intercept now, and I think he's gonna be able to deny it. That was great. That was a really good block. That was nice. All right, lings are out. Gonna try and push this probe out, and he will. Now, will he commit with all the lings? Okay, he actually does. He's gonna commit here and force two cannons out. Sulky in response will take mid left as his hatchery. Um, yeah, it's, I don't think there is danger for Bisu here. Um, he probably should like send this worker uh, like to keep it scouting. Um, yeah, he, he definitely needs to scout. As he mentioned, Zerg can just straight up win with Hydra Bust or Mutas. And if you're caught off guard, the game will be over in a heartbeat. So it's imperative that he scouts again. But the probe retreated all the way back to his main. He's he's not on the map at all. This is... this Is, is this normal now in PvZ that you just don't keep your probe out? Like, I, I can't imagine that being normal. But well, luckily for uh, for Bisu, um, he made a pylon, so he's delaying that uh, the yeah. hatchery from Solki. Yeah. Um, you know, like it allows uh, Sol uh, Bisu to send a worker out again. So there is going to be a scouting for him. I'm not really worried too much uh, about it right now. Um, but we, I wasn't re really like pressing too much attention to the gas. It looks like Solki is going to my lair. Yeah, it should be lair. Yep, there it is. Immediate lair. Probe has still been denied, so doesn't know exactly what's going on. Nexus is about to finish. We've got the cybernetics starting up right now, so everything so far looks like it's a pretty normal game. Ninepool did what it needed to do, which was force two cannons. And Probe... Well, he's gonna... Oh, he's actually gonna go to top left. I thought he's gonna go to mid left. Yep. Um... I would probably would like to see at least like Bisu put some pressure with Silots. This way the worker also gets more freedom to, to do more scouting. Yeah, and I, as you say that, I think the first Zealot is moving out right now. He desperately wants to get in here and figure out what's going on. He, he needs to know if Hydras are coming, he needs to build cannons. If Mutas are coming, you know, he can power some more. And the probe? Oh, actually the Zealot doesn't commit. I guess he's a little bit worried that there could be Lings. Moorlings, I mean. Good job by Bison keeping the worker alive. Yep, and now it's going to be two zealots. I'm not sure if actually the Overlord spotted both zealots move out, but now the Ling sees it. And Stargate is halfway done. Meanwhile, Spire has started. So everything just looks very, very normal to me, at least. Second gas coming down for Sulky. Oh. It's going to be Mutas. Oh. Yeah, that is the... That is the important bit of this game, is that second gas that you can... Um, now Bisu can be in so much danger, because he can auto-lose to Mutalis. Yep, yeah. it could be a lot of Mutalis also. The Zealots are hiding at the Mineral only, have not been spotted just yet. But as soon as those Lings are out of position, you imagine they're going to be going in and looking for some kills. Do the Ling spot? I don't think he actually saw them. First Sarah's gonna be coming out pretty soon. Pretty normal Citadel timing, I don't I, I think. And like you said, mutas are gonna be coming. Look at that. Not very many drones mining that third base at all. Yeah, he's missing. He's missing many drones. So he needs for sure like to do damage with this build. Yeah, so when you when you say mutas are coming, are you expecting it to be like you know, 11 mutas, 5 mutas with mass scourge, or what What are we looking for here? Are we going to yeah, go yeah, for like a Yeah, yeah, like 6, 6, 7 mutas with mass scourge, uh, straight to the main, okay. uh, the, win the game that way. Okay, and look at this. He saw that the links were out of position, and hello, two zealots, one into the nat, one into the main. Corsair spots everything, even sees the second gas, so he knows that mutas are on the way. Already one drone taken out. Can he get a second one? Good control so far from Sulky. Ends up saving that one. Loses another one, though. However, Mutas are on the way. Zealots are just going to counter. Try and buy some time. The cannons, are they too late? There's only two. Oh, there's a, there's three Sarahs, but one of them's in the main. 
Yeah, but as long as there are cannons in the main, he's fine. Yeah, and those cannons, now that the mutas are not immediately going there, they will be done in time. And actually, this is a lot of lanes. Yeah, Bisu, Bisu is playing right now with Sulky Nayokan. <laughs> um... I don't think there's enough mutas. Like, you can't commit now. And these zealots have now done a lot of damage, forced out a lot of lings. The eco was already low, and the mutas didn't do anything. Yeah. Whoa, what? Wow. Okay. This game is getting more interesting. Double grave for the speed and the range, and the range, and I, can, I, don't, I don't really think it's going to be lurkers, but it could be lurkers as well, but I think it's going to be range and speed at the same time. Yeah. Going for a key timing, maybe using the mutas to snipe few, few of the high templars and, you know, like finishing it with hydras. Yeah, he's on three hatches, so I, I feel like this is, you know, we got to win the game with it. I don't, I don't think there's going to be a fourth or fifth hatch unless there's some type of, I don't know, insane trade where he thinks that he can actually um, transition out of it. But I think You know he's... something important, Ayoken? Yeah. There are no more than five mutas and Bisu is still making Corsairs. That is true, and there's no cannons being built either. Also, the Templar Archive just finished, so there's no Templars either or Storm. There's no DT. He's trying to act like he's building mass mutas, and but he's not. Like, there's Hydras here. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. Bisu is in trouble. He's only two cannons. Uh, he's he saw the Hydras? He oh, saw the Hydras. He saw he sees it now, but it's too late. All these Zelta goons are out of position. There's only two cannons. The, the mutas are still alive, so they can soak up the hits on the cannons. It's, this could be it. Cannons, I it. cannons being focused down. Mutas are taking the shots. The mutas are all going to die. But there's nothing here to deal with the Hydras. DT, oh, DT pops out. There's no Overlord. Can he save the day? A single cannon in the back. Oh, if the pylon gets taken down, he's going to have no production. Oh, man, this is a heartbreaking way to lose. DT is desperately trying. The Hydras ran into the main for some reason instead of trying to deal with the natural. And a second DT is out. The Overlord died. So that means that these DTs can actually save the game. You can see that the Overlords are desperately trying to get into position. There's still no um, over, or no speed yet. The Sayers are over on the left side of the map. They don't realize there's two Overlords at the right side. There's three DTs out now. Yeah, but there are two Overlords. Uh, can he kill these Overlords? He's trying to focus them down. He knows that, it, oh, speed kicked in. And one Overlord ended up surviving. The cannons, how close are they? I see that's it, now you can. This is, this is so close. The Overlord is desperately trying to get it, but it looks like Solky's just barely gonna have too much. There it is, GG, and Solky, he's done it. He's gonna take down Bisu here and get out in first place. Wow, the champion prevails. That was, <laughs> that was so nice mind games by Solky. Yeah. To be fair with you, I thought like the second game was... It was looking really bad for him. What a way, what a way to transition with a double Hydra then and going for a, that for that key timing. Um, to be honest, like yeah, I, I, I honestly uh, wow, that that was a miracle game. Uh, as a third player, that was a really nice comeback. Yeah, because it looked like he was super dead. Like the mutas did no damage. Like you were saying, the econ was not great. Then these three zealots forced out a million zerglings that he didn't need. So the econ was really bad. Then we look in his main, he's gone double hydrated. And I'm like, dude, this guy's on full on panic mode. Yet the hydra timing was great because the mutas kept the Corsair back. He had no idea it was coming. And it completely caught Bisu off guard. Again, he was far forward at, with his units at an inopportune time. Like right here, he moves out and loses everything immediately. And then what do you have left to defend with? Just two cannons. Man, there was like five or six drones in the main. Yeah, he had nothing. <laughs> like, look look at the mini-map. You can see the bottom three mineral patches aren't even being mined. He's just completely all in. Yeah, I'm looking for Bisu to have this army exposed like this. Um, I don't really know if it would make a difference, to be honest. It's, there is only two cannons anyway. Yeah, the DT wants... I, I, the first one, I didn't think it was going to be enough. But once the second DT got out and there was no overlord, I was like, wow, is he actually going to hold this off because i feel like this is this shouldn't be happening i i think sulky almost messed up here because i was looking at this and i was thinking like well if you kill the forge 
this guy can't build any more cannons, but he ran into the main, and I was like, what? How? I thought he actually messed up here, but in the end, these two overlords were here, heroic, hidden on the right side, ending up uh, syncing up with the Hydras later on. Yeah. Man, I agree. That was... That was something else, like... <laughs> Yeah, these DTs, 40 damage, man, 40 damage per swipe, 43 if you get the plus one upgrade. The, the Corsair, I guess the, the real game-saving move for Soul Key was he whittled down the Corsair count from seven down to four, and that means that those two overlords survived. If the two overlords get taken down, these cannons complete, and I think Bisu, there's a chance that he ends up holding. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, he didn't have that many gate was either yeah. to... To make silos, so uh, to... yeah, and he didn't have Templars or Storm either. So you know, maybe it, maybe the Hydra still would have won. You're not sure exactly, but either way, Sulky making it out in first. I'm sure he's ecstatic. He's the first player into the round of eight, and we're going into interview with him. So we do have our deciders match coming up, or not deciders, our losers match coming up. As we know, it's Mong versus JYJ. Uh, Mong. Was TVT his best matchup? I can't remember exactly what his graphics uh, there, there is like 20% uh, oh, win no. rate on... Yeah. Oh, no. That's that's not good. I, I think JYJ is the most dangerous... One of the most dangerous Terran versus Terran players. Of course, I think Sokka is the absolute best. But what makes JYJ dangerous in TVT is he'll play everything. As we all know, he can clearly play race. He's shown it versus Sulky. He plays Tank Goliath a decent amount of time. He's clearly willing to go 14cc even versus Protoss. And then, of course, he can play Vultures. So I think Mong, on the other hand, plays generally 3-fact Vulture. So it's going to be tough for him to come up with a counter versus JYJ, in my opinion. Yeah, I feel like Mong is more like a classic uh, TBT Terra. Yeah. In a way that he just like played to, you know, to control the map and all of that. And JYJ has the skills to actually like, to put pressure early on, to be, to be aggressive. And I feel like Mong... It's really missing that. Yeah, uh, I, I do really believe that he's a three-fact Vulture player, so I think he's most likely going to go for it. I hope he can come up with something special, though, whether it's 14cc himself or, you know, gasless into two-port Wraith or do something to mix it up because JYJ, he, he's just so solid. He's like, he's really gotten a lot better in the last couple of years. I think you got to mix something in versus him because if you just let him play his own build... Um, People have talked about how optimized he's gotten with his build. Like, he's just going to overrun you at some point. So, I think it's going to be tough for Mong here. But maybe maybe he's got some strategies planned. Maybe he's got, like, a sleeper pit, a sleeper build on Troy. Maybe Troy gets through and he can snipe a win there. Yeah, but that's the thing. I don't see Mong as a player yeah. to, to shine on a map like Troy. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. He's the kind of player that actually like shines the most in standard maps. Like Troy actually requires different skill sets. Yeah. Like, it's not really like about like the, the 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 mechanics. Yeah. So just as a an aside here, Rhett messages me, "What the heck? Double Hydrogen after failed Muta Scourge. He's also on uh, questioning Sulky's play there versus Bisu, but in the end, it ended up." winning the game um we've got bisu in the deciders match um based on what you've seen from bisu here like to me it seems like he's kind of off today regardless of who comes out of the bottom side do you think he can actually take down one of these terrans i the well the thing is like the first game against yoj was it was super chaotic but he won that yeah he did so the, the, there is like probably in the mindset that okay, I already did it. Maybe I can do it again. Yeah. I just need to play without less mistakes, and I would probably have like an easy game. That's probably my would be my mindset. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. I think if Bisu gets it together, he's definitely got a got a shot. I think he's definitely hoping Mong makes it out because JYJ is a a monster these days. Um. Solgi must have a lot to say about this victory. I'm surprised the interview is going so long. Yeah, man. Well, she says she's the champion, so I imagine that 
there are many people that are expecting him to to do a back to back um i honestly would love to see that um it would be amazing it would be great especially since there's only three zergs in the tournament if he can just say like hey we only actually need one and it's me i can take everybody out that would be impressive the asl event this is some type of battery. I still don't know what it is. What battery is this? Is it a laptop battery? What exactly is this? I saw somebody post on Reddit about the jerseys, but it doesn't seem like the jerseys are available anymore because I'm pretty sure we would have seen the pop-up right here. But those gaming chairs still available. Actually, it says it's 40% off. So if you have interest in this, you should check out the well-new chair. It's on Amazon. It's the top ranking chair on amazon i guess is what they keep promoting so if you have interest uh you know look them up on amazon and we're going to be going into a break and then we'll be back with our losers match which is going to be jyj versus mong And we are back. Let's check out those bands for our Mong versus JYJ losers match. Is anybody going to ban Troy? Are we going to have a double ban of Troy? Are we going to get a look at the bands? Right now we're looking at Mong here. And Gudis as well. Let's see it. Should be getting that graphic any moment now. Getting debated by the uh, 
production team, just like I did earlier. I forgot in the round of 16, they have the group stage um, selection part, you know, the highlights. By the way, that has been translated on our, our, our Tosis and Tasteless cast. You should check them out on their official Afrika Esports YouTube channel. It's always interesting to see why players choose each other. And, of course, of course, you knew Troy wasn't going to get through. It's a double Troy ban, but at least we get Dark Origin, Blitz, and Radeon. So, a couple different maps from the maps we just saw. Yeah. The old Neo Dark Origin, now you can... The map is still going on strong <laughs> after a few seasons. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be gone after this season. I think Dark Origins is a, a good map. It's interesting that we've got back-to-back two-player maps. wonder if anybody will get frisky here with an eight racks or six racks or something insane. Or will we just have normal openers? To be fair with you, I think it's a good map. But I actually prefer the, the first version of the map. The one that it, it, it had like so much mobility and in the corner expansions. But yeah, it's a, it's a good map. It's a solid map. Yeah, I'm trying to think what was the actual change. I think it was the pathways, right? The pathways to the corner bases were a little bit different. But our players are ready. It is time for game one of our losers match. JYJ facing off versus Mong. Alrighty, in the top left are Red Terran. It is Mong. And in the bottom right, one of our former ASL champions, it is JYJ. And yes, sir. JYJ. Yep. He actually, he, like last season, he he made a good series against Solky as well. Very, very close against Solky, to be honest. Yeah, in the season that he won ASL, it was what, like 3-2 to two or 4-3 to three or something? Like, they they were really good games. JYJ fans right there, a lot of Mong fans right here. Not sure exactly what DNA is. I guess it must be one of the school teams or one of the training yeah. teams. I think I have seen E4 with the with the tag as well. Okay. So neither player ended up actually going for eight rocks on this map. So that means we're just gonna have normal opener depot coming down. Now even though Okay, I, for a second I thought I missed the depot for Mong. I thought we were gonna have a 10-10-10, but not gonna be the case. Now, even though 11 gas is making a resurgence in Terran versus Protoss, 11 gas not really a thing in Terran versus Terran. So this should be either 12 gas or gasless from either side. Top four Terran versus Terrans. What is that? Does that say JYJ? Yeah, JYJ, 54% win rate in TVT. And it is just going to be normal. It's going to be, oh, Rax. And what about Mong? Yeah, it's Rax as well. Okay, yeah, Rax at the bottom side of his base. I recently found out that even if the opposing player hides a barracks at the very bottom left corner of the top left base, uh, when you build a bunker there, the minerals can spot it. <laughs> so you don't actually have to scout that area because you'll still, still see the bunker. Anyways, gas coming down for both sides. So there's going to be 12 gas from both. By the way, Nayoken, why, why so rare to see these days... Uh double barrack proxy against them because i remember nada did it against uh, i believe it was flash on blue storm yeah and he actually won the game two racks in terran versus terran yeah proxy barracks well it's a strong build if it doesn't get scouted like it can just outright win the game i actually don't really like eight racks that much it feels like unless the opposing player botches their micro you come out like even at best that's probably why you see two racks. If you're going to go for a proxy rack, you might as well just really commit and try and end the game. We got two SCVs intercepting in the center of the map. Both players have their factories coming down at basically identical times. I guess JYJ Scout is slightly faster, but that's it. Yeah, being annoying with this SCV. Uh, Mong? Yeah, I don't think he's going to force it off. I think the Marine will pop out in time. However, JYJ's Marine is very quickly done and has already racked up a lot of damage on the SCV. Yeah. Nothing crazy here, man. Similar builds. I was expecting at least like a, you know, like a barrack expansion at least from one of the players. Yeah. The only Why thing not? that I'm seeing different here is I keep looking at JYJ's money and like, dude, how do you have 80 more minerals? And the reason he has 80 more minerals is because he actually went for one Marine 
expand, whereas you see Long go for two. Now, I've been seeing sometimes players, when they build two Marines, immediately build an add-on and go straight tank. That's not the case here oh, with Mong. Oh my god. He doesn't get it. <laughs> Close, though. And all three back on the gas for both sides. So this I actually don't think is going to be three-fact Vulture from either side. This looks like it could be two-fact Tank Goliath. JYJ going to be aggro here with his Vulture. You got to be careful. If you get caught, uh, it's going to be it's going to get ugly real fast because he's got a, he's got an add-on coming down. Yeah, he needs a run. Yeah, fast uh, reaction from from Mong and fast reaction from JYJ. So nothing nothing happening. But um, can Mong like do something with this? With the two vultures, like, technically right now, yes, he could make an attack. But he doesn't know that there's an add-on. So he's not willing to commit here. Instead, he's just focusing on getting his build order up and running. Second fact, going down for both sides. It's actually three vultures for Mong. I guess he's going for mines here. Whereas I, I'm pretty confident that this is actually Tank Goliath from JYJ. I don't see the armory anywhere. Oh, maybe it's not. Is it really going to be a third fact? Okay, it's going to be heavy gas. Actually, he... He mined three on gas and then pulled off, so it is going to be three fact from both sides. Yeah, but that was a really good mind game from JYJ Nayok, and you got so much advantage already. Like, I got Monk could put some danger in this uh, in this natural, but no. Yep, and he now. Wasn't punished. Yeah, now when Monk sees the tank, he's going to be thinking it's Tank Goliath or Tank Wraith, which is why you see the Vulture rallied in the main of JYJ. He wants to hide the fact. That he's actually going three fact for as long as possible. I guess he, this has to be for speed. I can't imagine it being for anything else. If you're gonna hide the vultures, I feel like you must be wanting to get out there really quickly with the vultures. And there it goes. There goes the um, tank. He's gonna lead the way with the tank. Is going to scout the vultures? Oh, he does now. He now sees that it's a three fact. And Mong, I don't see. I thought he went mine upgrade, but I don't see any upgrades completed for him, so he, he's gone speed also. But the problem is, is he's got Mass Vulture into Mass Vulture, but this guy has an additional tank. Yeah, but the thing is, like, he can actually, like, use the bridges to his, yeah. to his advantage. Yeah. So it's not going to be so easy for JYJ to... Well, never mind. Monk's going for it. Yeah, and the Barrack sees where these Vultures are. Like, he knows that they're out. Okay, like you said, it is hard to get across the bridge, so even if you lead with the tank, the arc is going to be amazing for Mong. However, Mong has went off to the right side. This is going to get weird because JYJ's army is already here, man. And Mong's oh, Fields, what are you doing? I think he's trying to set up a massive flank. Oh, he almost intercepted those vultures, but wasn't able to. Uh, Mong, you need to get here. You're about to lose. You're natural. He's trying to come through the back, but the bridges! He, he was on move command! So much damage already taken. The tank at the front is going to get popped, but these vultures, there's an overwhelming amount for Mong, or for JYJ right now. The tank ends up finally dying, but look how many SCVs are starting to fall. He can kill this tank easily. One versus, what, ten? I mean, he lost all the vultures as well. Oh, can, oh. I see this is it. Oh, oh the, the, the mine didn't actually explode. But he does kill a ton of SCV, so Mong is going to fend off the attack, but at what cost? Also, JYJ has mines now, so there's no way that Mong can counterattack. That was a really good move from JYJ. It was an amazing move. He killed so much eco. Now he's on four factories. Um, by I mean, he's going to outproduce out uh, Mong by far. So I, I I don't know what can Mong do to to come back in this game, like. JYJ put mines everywhere, like, map control is, is non-assistant to, to Mon right now. Yeah, and what sucks also is if he gets an academy, that's going to cut into his SCV count also after losing so many SCVs. So he's just really in a horrible position, but he's got to get the comsat, because if he doesn't get the comsat, yeah, how does he clear these mines? And I love what JYJ is doing. If if he gets scanned, Mon's going to see 4-fact and think, oh, this guy's just all ending me. Well, not necessarily all ending me, but you understand, like, going mass factories. But he's actually hidden a starport at the corner of his base, so he's actually going to start building up some race. And JYJ can do so much. He can't even spam. So, it's, it's like... 
Yeah. It seems like Mong is making the scans now. The scans now. So even if he scans now to clean some mines, there is so much he need to clear that it's going to take him forever now. Yeah, he may. Oh, he's gotta be careful here. I can see these mines exploding and blowing up multiple tanks or multiple vultures. Actually, that's an add-on onto the starport. Like maybe he's going cloak. Maybe he's going dropship. Drop is very strong on this map because of that back pathway behind your natural. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, don't want to be over eager here. Even though you have map control right now, those are those are tanks in siege mode. They they hit quite hard. I'm not sure if does JYJ even have siege yet. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah, but he already used two scans, so now yeah. he's on hold. Yeah, now he can can't move much farther. Just chill out. Got a almost a 20 supply lead for JYJ. You know, when Terran versus Terran, one big siege hit or one big mine hit mine hit can turn that 20 supply lead into zero. We've got command centers being built from both sides. It is actually going to be dropship play from JYJ. Yeah, I think it's a good move because Mon, Mon is so behind that he doesn't have the units to, to be everywhere. Yeah. That is true. And the command center is on... Oh, he scans it, so he sees the starport. Uh, he missed the dropship, though. We've got the first one moving out. Already a couple of mines are set up behind the natural so tank drop won't be effective but a vulture drop could be great uh did the mine did the mine saw the draw chip i don't see mon like moving units or anything to yeah i don't i don't see any nation. reaction so i don't think he actually saw it but these mines will spot it however there's nothing in position i guess it is kind of a long travel distance so maybe the vultures can scurry back Instead, he drops directly on the Nat. Only two Vultures, though, so they don't one-shot SCVs. I don't know how much damage this will actually do. He ends up getting two SCVs so far. I don't think he's going to get any in the main. Yeah, the thing is, like, Nayoka, when you are behind and something like this happens, it's already good damage. Yeah, he ends up getting three SCVs overall. Command Center's done. The dropship spots, the starport, and he spots that race are being built. Now look at what this bought. It bought uh, JYJ time to move all of his units to the left side. If he gets on high ground here with tanks, I don't think Mon can bust that position, but he doesn't actually commit to it. I wonder what made him turn around. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I guess he, because he's controlling the dropship right now. Uh, it's a bit, a oh. bit of multitasking taxi. Oh, the, the mid is open now, okay. Yeah, he, he he made Mong think like, hey, I'm going to go attack the left side, but hello, I'm not. I'm actually attacking straight through the center. And now Mong is going to lose some tanks here. It looks like the tanks for Mong are going to get off okay shots. He needs to desperately get rid of these two tanks. Okay, he's going to take down one of them. He does get the second one, but uh, I feel like that was an okay trade for both sides. Um, he was like four times. Yeah, he did. We actually got some race being built for JYJ, and his rally point is kind of weird on that. I don't think the race will actually get scouted. I could catch Mong off guard because he's shown that he's gone dropship, so Mong is probably thinking like it's just going to be continued dropship play, but it's actually not going to be the case. Yeah, JYJ is recovering so much terrain right now. Oh, um, vision advantage for Mong. Goodbye tank. This is exactly what you should be doing in TVT. Pick off any tanks that are isolated. Now, neither player has built a fourth. Oh, another tank is going to get taken down. That is really well done from Mon. He needs some more trades like that. He's got control over his left side, so he can think about taking a fourth base. This is going to be six fact, seven fact, for JYJ, I think it's six fact right now for Mong, so pretty similar factory counts. But like I was saying, those race I think are now sitting at four or five, and I haven't seen a single Goliath out for Mong, so he needs to be careful. Yeah, I, oh. I feel like Mong is playing good, um, playing actually, it's actually playing fantastic. If it wasn't for the early game, uh, we probably would be seeing a different, yeah. or uh, at least like a more in control game for him. Yeah, he wouldn't be, you know, kind of stuck. Uh, okay, drop ship, get spotted, Wraith gets spotted, but still, 
He, there's no anti-air. I'm waiting for these wraiths to show themselves. Look, he's got five of them waiting. This is going to be rough. He's going to most likely catch this dropship. Okay, there's some Goliaths. Finally got some anti-air. And he will intercept these vultures. The vultures at least get spotted. Can he get any SCV kills? The answer is he gets one. He doesn't like those. Stop the CC? Yeah, he did stop the CC, but those 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 SCVs that were rallied up there did not get taken down. Uh, if they get two, we might have a long game, Eon, sorry, because both players, well, at least JYJ taking his fourth. Oh, oh did the Goliaths die? Okay. Where are they? There's, there's no anti-air. Maybe the Goliaths went too far forward. What happened? Dropship's on the left side, though. This could get dang- Oh, he, he scans it. Well, I think he actually missed the dropship. No, he did not. Here he comes. No way. Oh, oh my god. I thought he will intercept the dropships. Oh, he did miss it. So, double drop. You would think that this drop will do a lot of damage, but my experience making drops like this happen on Dark Origin, actually, a lot of Terrans just defend it really well. So, I'm not sure how effective this will actually be. However, this move will be effective. Whether he gets in range of the command center doesn't really matter. Well, maybe not. This mind connects. He's going to bleed off these tanks. Again. Yeah, he's bleeding off these tanks because the drop is happening at his natural right now. But the problem is, is there's no anti-air. Oh, well, this is going to get cleaned up really quick. Goliaths were sitting here waiting for the vultures, so this got denied very easily. And, uh-oh, JYJ has already a lot of tanks set up here. I don't know if Mong will be able... Ooh, big connection. I don't know if Mong will be able to take this base. He lost all of his supporting units. Now it's basically only tanks. Yeah, the drop was a good idea, man. Like, if imagine, like, instead of, instead of vultures, like, Goliaths. Yeah, Goliaths do soak up a lot of hits they also deal more damage than the vultures uh, Mong oh I actually thought that was Mong taking top right but that's JYJ taking top right this is starting to get out of hand Mong desperately needs to get mid left instead is he gonna make a move through the center does anybody have plus two oak oh, well this could be an anti-timing JYJ moving into Mong while he's got a ton of tanks coming out um I think solid defense here by JYJ yeah, it looks like there's going to be a few too many tanks on the bottom side, but it does look like there is an opening on the rope. Oh, maybe not. Three tanks are going to set up in siege mode. Mines are going to try and get set up. But you got to remember, there's still those race, so they can just move over here and help support. There's still no Goliaths. Yeah. Even with the great advantage, he wasn't really able to get yeah. eight. Plus two just kicked in for Mong. Oh, plus two just kicked in for JYJ. So these tanks hit really, really hard. There's still no Goliaths, man. These race racking up so many. Oh, that is a uh, off center command center. Just a little bit. Uh, well, look at the box. Yeah, going crazy yeah, here. Yeah, what's he doing? Going straight through the center. He didn't realize that there's still that many tanks. And now he's going to lose all these SCVs at mid right. Supplies really got shaved off for JYJ, but uh, still the issue is for Mong is the fourth base. He's special in Sopa, he's losing all the eco. Yeah, but he's got he's got four command centers. I think he can replenish this easily. I'm I'm most worried about these tanks getting continuously picked off by race, and there's still no fourth command center for Mong. That is a huge army though. How many tanks are behind these race? Um I I, I I don't know how Mong is like making that many tanks to be honest. I don't know either. Like, why is there? So well, I guess the gap is because he has five tanks over on the left side. JYJ, I mean, that's why uh, he obviously doesn't have as much in the center. But like I said, JYJ, he has five commands there. Look at this. Is are these fully loaded? If they're fully loaded, he may just wait for Mong to move out and go for a, a counter doom drop. Oh, Mong's desperate. He's pulling the boys. Here he goes. This is make or break for him. If he doesn't break out of this. He's going to feel, or he's probably going to get starved out, but at the same time, JYJ is going for a Doom drop into the natural, into the main. Oh, uh, look at it for a moment. There are tank, tanks popping, so... Oh. He cleared it. He cleared the center. There's actually not that much. He's doing kind of a weird drop at the natural while also dropping the third base. That is a lot of tanks, though. Oh, he's shutting down both bases at the same time. However, Mog with a counterattack to top right, He's going to knock down the 4th base while also knocking down the 5th base mining. 
Supplies have plummeted for both sides. Look at Mong's money though, 95. He's stuck at 95 because he is not mining at all. Oh, this game is pure chaos, man. Okay. Yeah, there is eco damage everywhere, but I feel like JYJ is winning this, uh, this battle. Yeah, Command Center is dead. It is completely blown up. So that's gone. All the SCVs have died from Mong, except for the ones in the main. I don't even know where this drop came from, but we got five tanks in the main now. There's still no Goliath. Oh, he just loads it back up. There is a Wraith to try and save the day. These tanks are so strong, though. Goodbye. Okay, he will clean it up, but... Man, massive losses on both sides. That tank is... Oh, there's a drop. Uh, he unloaded over there again. Um, Where are the race? JYJ probably has his race still alive, right? No, he, he lose him. Uh, I guess he, he could have he could have lost him. Uh, JYJ setting up another contain outside of the third. Oh, he sees that these tanks are not seized, which means it's go time. It's eight tanks versus two. Good shot from Mong, but it's just a numbers game. Goliaths are gonna wow. try and save the day. Look how fast those Goliaths get blown up. Tanks from the top side, instant focus fire from JYJ, and now it's 89 supply to just 60 from Mong. Oh, did did uh, did Mong kill JYJ's fourth command center? It looks like it's dead. I don't even know like how, how Mong is like, still going. Like. Yeah. He was not mining. I mean, he's still barely mining, but he's got his two bases up and running now. He, I guess, rebuilt the command center at the natural. Fifth base is still denied. Okay, there's a big SCV transfer to top right. And... Yeah, it's true he has many SCVs. Maybe he has even like more SCVs than JYJ right now. Yeah, he might. He did take a lot of losses. There is a Vulture. Okay, I thought he was going to do a run by to top left, but not going to be the case. Wow, that is still so many drops. And this time, with Goliath also loaded up, wherever he drops, Race will not be able to save the day. He may just carpet bomb this army. There's not there's uh, not a lot here. Yeah, yeah, this is gonna be it. This is gonna be make or break. Mong needs to kill this army and it does not look like he's going to, so he's gonna lose everything. And JYJ, he should take game one. There it is, GG comes out. And that was a great game, really back and forth, really chaotic near the end. Uh, and like you said in the beginning, if Mong didn't take so much damage, you know, we could have seen a Mong victory here potentially. Man, it was super close. It was actually super close. Um, it was actually way closer than I, what I expected. Like he took so much damage all game long, and like like JYJ was trading so well, like getting so many tanks early on as well, like controlling the center. I I honestly I he played for, he played really good. Like to be to be behind like that. I'm, be able to put that kind of pressure and I'm hopeful that he can do better. Yeah, I think he's definitely got a shot here. He, not only did he take a lot of damage in the beginning, remember the race from JYJ like killed so many tanks. Also, Mong had that failed drop outside of the natural of JYJ. So like three things went really wrong for him and he was still in it. So definitely have high hopes for him on Blitz. Blitz, another two player map. This is another map where proxies can be very, very strong. So both players gonna be very need to be very diligent with their scouting. Let's get into game two. All right, in the top right, we do have Mong. He needs your energy chat because he is one game away from being eliminated. Meanwhile, JYJ one game away from making it into a rematch versus Bisu. No SCV being sent out. You're generally sending it out on five if you're going to be eight raxing, so this should be a normal opener from both sides. Yeah, it just comes to mind that they are playing two players map back to back. Yeah, and this map drops are incredible. Not only can you, not only is there so much surface area to drop, but if you drop the main, you're overlooking the third base at the same time. So I do expect this map uh, to have tons and tons of dropships also with drops you can control that center right base right and that's like got what like triple gas or something crazy so very important to control the air Actually, i didn't see a single terran versus terran on this map is that actually something that happened they use uh, that island 
Well, it's really hard to get, but if you can get it, it's uh, very impactful. I also have not seen anybody get it because generally the game doesn't get to that point. Or if it does get split, both players know how important that base is and make sure they always have defense there. Is yeah, it... because I know you can shut down the the, the island from yeah from outside, so yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. It is difficult, and there is the racks and gas from both sides. Okay, for a moment I thought this was going to be 14 CC from Ong, but not going to be the case. Just another 12 gas opener from both. Okay. Yeah, they are respecting each other right now yeah i'm nothing i was gonna say i'm surprised that nobody's actually scouted <laughs> like they nobody even scouted their natural nobody scouted I, I guess jyj scouted the corner of his base but mong didn't really scout um neither player is proxying of course but it is very common on here jyj gonna send out his scout and mong going to also so pretty much identical timings yeah i, I was thinking like is this one actually like better for the for the grace play better for wraith yeah yeah wraith can be good if you if you intercept a guy going drops well that can be tons of supply gone in an instant and race like you saw last game jyj built a decent amount of them he built like five so we definitely could see wraith style it is again one marine from jyj and a lift off will mong do the same thing Looks like he's actually going double marine again. And yeah, my only issue about like going going grave on, on this map is that there are not too much gas. There is like a mineral only. So I, I don't I don't know. Yeah, and if you don't get mid left or Yeah, if you don't get mid left and you deny mid left, so both players just end up have four, having four gas. You know, you can run out of gas real quickly going going race. They're very, <laughs> very expensive units. And JYJ, that should be a depot. I thought it might be a starport for a moment, but not just yet. SCV coming in for a secondary scout. Actually manages to get by the Marines somehow. Will not get into the main, though, so we'll only see one Vulture. This time around, it does look like JYJ is going for multiple Vultures. How many will it be, though? Usually it's two. Sometimes player goes for three. Second factory going to be coming down for Mong? Mm. But JYJ... Did he invest in, uh -oh. in the starport? Uh, he hasn't invested oh, in anything yet. He's caught the vulture. Oh, it actually gets away. Now JYJ puts down the second factory. And this time Mong actually goes for a fast add-on himself. Two vultures into fast add-on. Actually, JYJ is going triple quadruple vulture. Now, if you're going to go quadruple vulture, you got to move across the map. You cannot just sit here. You got to do something with it. And there he goes. He's avoiding the barracks also. So Mong has no idea this is coming. This could be really bad, especially if it's a tank. Um, well, I think, I think it's a tank. It might be. The tank, well, if, if JYJ doesn't go in, okay, it is a third vulture, so that's fine. He is just going to most likely back off. Oh, instant repair, really good repair. Really good repair! Almost ends up managing to save that vulture, but in the end, that was really, really good. Second factory is faster for Mong, so I don't think he's really under any threat here. I don't anticipate JYJ being able to bust through. Look at that timing, perfect. Ooh, good focus fire. Oh, he's gonna knock down the weakened vulture in the back, and JYJ all of a sudden. He's the one that needs to start running. And remember, Mong got the faster fact, uh, second factory. He also had a faster add-on. So he could, if he's rushing speed, he could catch JYJ with a lower vulture count. Yeah, but um, I, I'm he's doing a lot of vultures. But what if actually JYJ like he's been, he, I don't think he's doing that, but he's making like a, a siege tank and key because he, I think he's making like a. A Sin City outside? Actually, it's, I don't see He's going. Uh, I, this Mong might be able to do it right here. It's six vultures versus four. Soon to be seven. Or, uh, okay, actually, it is six. I thought that was already six. So six versus four. 
Of course, the rally point advantage for JYJ. Okay, actually, maybe Mong can't do it. This is gonna be really close if he actually ends up. Oh, he's got a tank. He ended up building a tank, so he's gonna make the same move that JYJ did. JYJ, all he does, all he has is speed. There's no mines. This is gonna be really tough to hold. Okay, luckily he built the tank similar. also. It's a similar army. Yeah, if, it, if it's it's very lucky that he built the tank there. If it was vultures, I think Mong easily wins the fight. Instead, it's gonna be an even army count, but Mong does have high ground advantage. He also has Rax vision. So if he gets siege mode, he can be in a killer position. Look at the supplies, 73 to 59. That's a massive lead. It's almost the same situation from the last game, but different different players doing it. Ooh, he caught JYJ out of position. He's gonna easily win this fight. Also, Tang getting, getting a few shots off. This is snowballing really poorly. Uh, why, why Mong is not doing, no, 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 not attacking? He should be attacking. I think, uh, yeah, I think he might be worried that there could be mines and he doesn't want to overstep, but I, I think he just wins with straight up Volt. Whoa, just JYJ sending an SCV to try and build a command center? No way does that happen. That tank dies. And look at the supplies now. There's, yeah, it's not even close. GG. GG. And we've got a series, boys. Is that easy for Mong? Is it's that, that easy. easy for Mong? Dang, who knew? You just build mass vultures, mix in one tank, catch the guy out of position once, and you just win the game. That's crazy. That's the kind of play I was expecting from JYJ to pull, and this Mon doing it. Yeah, it was really well done from Mong. Of course, JYJ's initial attack did not go as he wanted, but the supply lead was huge for Mong. I'm not sure how he got that up so high maybe he hit a he maybe had a fourth fact that i missed but jyj sending that scv to build a what i thought was a third command center that that was crazy like there's no way he could hold that by the way i saw i saw mong uh, early on before the before the game started eating eating on a sweet that worked it mm. this guy you know, is now uh, with micro like like light yeah you got that sugar high going going crazy on the mouse <laughs> Now we're getting into our final uh, map here. It's going to be Radeon. Both players on the brink of elimination. Very important for both sides. Let's get into game three. Find out who's going to be facing off Bis facing off versus Bisu in our deciders match. So, in the top left, we've got Mong, and then in the bottom right, we've got JYJ. So we've got cross spawns, and we've got our first four-player map. Is anybody going to be feeling it? Are they going to be feeling that 14cc? Is anybody going to be feeling BBS? I actually do think somebody will 14cc this game. It's just so good, TVT. If you get away with it, it's crazy strong. Hmm. And the spawns are perf perfect for that, man. Yep. yep, they couldn't get any better. Another ASL fan. He was e even repping one of the old school ASL jackets. I think, I'm not sure if it was season 16, but for whatever reason, that jacket reminds me of the one that Effort was wearing. Yeah, talking about jackets, the, the ones uh, from this season, yeah. they are fire. Well, to be honest, they, yeah. they are super cool. They're the black ones that you're seeing right now. We got depots coming in for both sides. No BBS from anybody this game. Just waiting to see. Will anybody risk it for the biscuit with the 14cc? Well, JYJ did it against Bisu, so why not doing yeah. it against Mon? I know, he did it in game one, man. Even Terran versus Protoss. That's, 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 he's a madman. Doesn't seem like he's going to do it this time. And Mong, not either. I guess game three with your tournament life on the line, neither player wants to risk it. Now, JYJ is sending out a fast scout here. I guess this is going to be gasless for him. He wants to scout the center to make sure he's not getting hit with proxy racks, though. So that's going to be a cross scout. And because of that, he will find Mong first. Well, I think he's cross scouting. Yep, there he goes. By the way, now you can um, oh. cross the spawns like this. 
Um, what, what do you feel about the, the positions? Like, how do you set up to to really like to defend your bases? From a push, if you're going gasless, or what? Or, or, or just in general, the spawns? Um, just in general, yeah, in general. Well, it seems like you're going to have to start splitting diagonally because you definitely don't want to lose control over this uh, of the top middle base. You also want to make sure you can get another main. Um, that's what I would think. You definitely don't want to give up the center. The center of is massive. Like, I, I feel like it's super exposed to drops. Like Yeah. Also, the dead space between the top middle base and like the top of the map, like it's huge. Like... <laughs> There's so much area there. You, like you can't build turrets at the top base and deny dropships from coming in. So yeah, drops could definitely be a massive threat. There's the command center for JYJ. Gas coming in, and the SCV doesn't get into the main, but he at least sees that there's no command center, so he knows that he's got uh, an eco advantage. Um. By the way, the uh, Mon is scouting this so late that I don't think there is. Uh... Even if you wanted it, there is not really a way to, to punish uh, this build from JYJ. Uh, sometimes you could can do like a frosty factory or something like that, yeah. but I think it's too late now. Yeah, it's really hard to punish gasless. I, I still don't know how to punish it. Like it just <laughs> for whatever reason I, I I can't can't deal with it. I think the best counter I've seen, in my opinion, is it was a game a long time ago, Light versus Flash on Ground Zero. Flash just rallied like outside of the natural, like not not close to the natural, but like in between the nat and the third base, for example, here. And he just sat there with Tank Goliath and Light could never get out. So I think a, ma a good contain like that could be strong, but I don't think Mon's going to go for it. He has gone for instant add-on. Now you would think that this would be for Starport, but these days I've actually seen more and more players rush mines here. So I'm going to assume that this is going to be for mines. Whether... Uh, the mines connect on anything or not doesn't really matter. It gets you vision, which is great. So you'll know when JYJ makes a move out on the map. By the way, is that is that a complete wall or there is a there is an opening? That should be a complete wall. I, I'm pretty sure it's a complete wall, so shouldn't be able to get in. Straight add-on for JYJ. Kind of risky to go. No star ports when you're going gasless because you do need vision and. If you don't have air superiority, you can't get that. But luckily for him, he's not facing race this time. Mong's actually going into armory, so he, he may be listening in. Maybe he's thinking about rallying tanks and Goliaths across the map. Um, but it's, it's cross the spawns. It's, like, it's sending the units over there. It's, it's going to take so yeah. long for him. Yeah, it will take a long time. So... I guess probably won't go for a contain. The armory is most likely just in anticipation of race because usually when you go gasless, you do go starport at least one, sometimes even two. But JYJ mixing it up here with double add-on, armory, academy. I'm surprised he's making academy so fast. Yeah, I think he realizes he's getting contained from mines, or by mines, so he wants to scan and clear them out immediately. I think we saw JYJ play something similar. Was it versus Tengu or somebody uh, in the round of 24? And he followed up this two fact with like a five fact pretty quickly. And there goes the third and fourth. Wow. Fact. Yeah. So he's going to be trying to hit some type of bus timing with this. I don't think this is, you know, just to try and get map control. I think he really wants to hit something really hard. Well, Mon, he has planes, mines everywhere. He has like a really good map control right now. Um, making the second refinery as well. But he's only on two factories at the moment. He's making a tier one, but it's only on two. Yeah, I like how Mong has spaced out mines on the right side because those are you know unlikely pathways, not really going to connect. But the pathways that JYJ are likely to take, they have multiple mines there. So if he kills like two out of the three mines and one connects. Well, that's a lot of damage, right? And if two connect, stuff's blowing up. So he does need to be careful here. And JYJ on the move. Army is not that big. Marine gonna lead the way. We'll soak up one mine hit. Will it? Nope. Does not. Oh, oh. That one doesn't connect. Oh, he scans, but he misses those mines. Well, at least he's cleaning the, the east side. Yep. And. 
the fact that he cleaned up that side of the map makes me think he may actually not be going for a bust. Maybe he wants to take a fast third base. There goes the SCV. But he has a lot of tanks and Goliaths right now. Whereas Mong, uh, he's got a decent tank count. Not sure if he has Siege. If he has Siege, I think he's fine. But if he doesn't have Siege, could be in trouble. There's oh. the mine connection I was talking about. Goodbye, Goliath. Just like that. Goliath is an expensive unit. He can't really lose it like that. Yep. And I do hear Siege. So Mong does have it. And he is very far forward. JYJ. With Mong being this far forward out in the map, I think JYJ suspects that this guy must be taking a third base, which is why you see him looping around towards the left side, thinking that there no might way. be a third over there. Oh, he avoids, he avoids all of them. Mong's in trouble. Uh, there's a lot of tanks in Goliaths here. Three tanks are not enough. Vultures are good to try and buy time, but they are not great at fighting. And JYJ, uh, that tank is alive. No mines connect. This is what I was talking about. I didn't think that this was gonna be for just the contain. He goes for a killing move. He takes down all the tanks. Now he can set up a contain outside of the natural while also denying the third base. He might just go for the throat. Oh! These mines are going to kill these tanks, man. Or oh, kill one. I'm not sure if it's gonna be. Oh my god, look at the supply, Eon Zerg. 49 to 88. In an instant, the game gets turned on its head. Hand off the keyboard, Mong. He tops, taps out in JYJ. He is going to bulldoze through Mong in game three. Man, that was so unfortunate. Like, wow. He he lost that <laughs> in a flash. Like, that, yeah. was, that was the game. Like, just like, he he magic, he put some magic in dodging the mines in the left side. Go in, all of a sudden, the, all the space is open. And Mong just like panic, siege, and lose all the units. Yeah, I think Mong, uh, I'm not sure if Mong had scans himself, but he must have expected JYJ to take an expansion after clearing out the mine on the right side. But JYJ actually had a timing coming. If, if Mong had matched the factory count instead of expanding, I think the game goes on. If you look at the workers, you know, they're very close. Supplies are very close. Yeah, he avoids the, the mines. But I mean, this is just a skimpy army. It's three tanks, one Goliath and six vultures or something, and vultures don't really do any damage here. Also, you gotta remember, these vultures have used all of their mines, whereas JYJ has mines. Yeah, it's you just You know, my much. issue here is that he sees pretty much in the face of the JYJ army. Like, well, it's the... really like, it didn't help to see at all. Yeah, it doesn't, but it's kind of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't type of situation, right? Like, there's so much stuff for JYJ. If you just run, where are you going to run to? Your third base? Well, then he's just going to kill that. If you run to your natural, he's just going to contain you, and then you're screwed either way. I don't know what Mong should have done. The only thing he could have done was not build a fast third base like that. I think that's really his only option. At the end of the day, he just died to pure production, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, and it, it, that's really hard to make work in TBT. So well done from JYJ. He does it again. Don't know how he does it. This sets us up for a rematch versus Bisu. We're going into a break, and then we'll be back in the next couple minutes.
And we are back. We're getting into our final match of the day. As you can see, we had Sulky take down Mong, Bisu take down JYJ. That set us up for Sulky getting out in first place versus Bisu. Then JYJ just took down Mong in some good games, especially game two. And now we've got a rematch of our first game of the day. Can Bisu do it again? Can he take down JYJ? Or will JYJ get revenge? That is the question I can. And what maps are we going to see from these two? What are going to be the ban the bans? Um, I don't think we're going to see Troy now, Yoken. I don't think it's going to ha it's going to happen this time. Yeah, I think Troy is just one of those maps that's going to be vetoed all the way until the finals. JYJ did veto it versus Mong. Something to point out: Bisu did not veto it in his games versus Sulky, so I guess there is a world where it could make it through. But I imagine this is just an immediate veto from JYJ. Somebody lit it through in the round of twenty-four B versus Bisu, and Bisu what he proxy gated, and huh, well, the game ended real fast. And there's the ban, Radeon ban again from Bisu. So back-to-back -back Radeon bans for him, whether it's t a PVZ or PVT, for whatever reason, he just does not want to play that map. That does give us, what was it, Dark Origin, Citadel, and Retro. So pretty standard maps. Let's get into game one. Dark Origin is going to be map one. And in the top left are Protoss player. It is Bisu. And meanwhile, in the bottom right are Terran. It's JYJ. Oh! oh! You love to see it. Fast probe. This should be a 9 gate. I don't think this is fast enough for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Could also be for no, I don't think it's for just gas steel. I think this is a proxy. Do you think so? It, it should be. If you're gas stealing this fast, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. I like this. is just absurdly quick. Now, where's the pylon going to go? Whoa, it's going real deep. Okay, that's farther than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be near the bridges. Uh, but instead, it's going to be right outside the main. Why not making it the main, by the way? Um. Well... If you get scouted in the main, I mean, that gets scouted really quickly. Whereas when you build it at the natural, Terran has to pull a lot. Uh, pull a quite a far distance. And sometimes you can actually get the Zealot out. Um, so I think that's mostly the reason. And here comes that probe. And a 10 racks for JYJ. So he expects something like this to be coming. And he's right. Now, Bisu, he does need to gas steal. Because if you don't gas steal... Becomes pretty obvious what you're doing. Okay, yep, there's the gas steel. Now it's a good timing. It doesn't really give anything away. JYJ needs to scout for this. Like, he needs to know that this was a proxy gate because the best counter to it is going two racks. And if he does not build a second racks, it could get ugly if he loses any amount of Marines. And when I see BZ doing stuff like this, it reminds me his game against Flash in the Pro League final. He pulled yeah. a crazy multitasking. Uh, Stealing gas, uh, making pylons in the middle lines. Yeah, the Marine Medic. Oh, JYJ killed the Steven. Oh, no. That's a huge win for JYJ. Probes actually deal a decent amount of damage. And there's the second racks. And yeah, I know what game you're talking about. It's the Marine Medic game, right? With uh, that flash pulled out. Uh, air, incredible game. Actually, someone linked it to me recently. But the first Zealot is on the way. But because it's a 10 racks, Marine's already out. Second Marine's going to be out pretty soon. And another probe has to be sent. Yeah, the, 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 the important part is the is the worker, and he does that, so... Yeah. Also, <sighs> what a lot of Terran players do is they take one SCV and they just attack your pylon. I'm not sure if... Yeah, yeah there is an SCV there. And uh, the SCV does actually a surprising amount of damage. Like, if you're not paying attention, that pylon could, could, could be dead. Ooh, that was good oh. stutter step micro. That was a hurt SCV and gets taken down immediately. Yeah, but that, that is two barracks producing marines. Um, at least Bisu is already transitioning from this. He's making the gas in the in the main, probably make, going to make a second getaway as well. Yeah, so the magic number that JYJ is looking for here is seven 
is pretty good versus three zealots. After that, you're really looking for something like nine to 11. Once you start reaching that amount of numbers, these zealots cannot hold the marines. They're just way too strong. So Bisu needs to be careful. Do not bleed any zealots. He's already lost a lot of shield health. Oh, here we go. There's the seven that I was talking about, but he needs a couple more marines. Ooh, good body blocking focuses down one of the zealots, but they get on top of the marines. And this was the fight that, Jay, or the, that Bisu was looking for. He did not have the magic number of nine marines and he gets punished immediately. Oh man, and loses SCVs. Ooh, look uh, at that. He's killing most of the Zealots. Oh, that was, that was, that was really good. Body blocks with the SCV, gets rid of all the Zealots. What was a disaster, all of a sudden is now a disaster for Bisu. This gateway is gonna, well, it's not a disaster for him, but he's gonna probably lose his gate. Bunker should maybe get placed down. Oh, I guess the pylon's too low. So I, I guess he's really not under any threat of losing these Marines and SCVs to a second goon. So he will knock this down. Factory coming down, I think. Uh, yeah. Yep, so... He can even CC as well. Yeah, he's got a lot of money for it, and... I thought Bisu did enough damage killing that amount of Marines and killing the SCVs, but after losing those three Zealots, I guess he didn't necessarily do enough damage, but now goons are on the move. Range should be completing pretty soon. This gate does give a read on how many Marines there actually are, which is five. Range not done just yet. Uh, if range is complete this fast, well, that means that the OJ is going to need to repair this bunker like a, a, like a long time. That, yeah. that factory is no, it's not done, my opinion. Yeah, I think range is maybe like 30 seconds away or something. It should be relatively close, but yeah, you're right. He will have to repair this for quite a while. Well, maybe act, maybe not, actually. This add-on's almost halfway done, so JYJ got his gas pretty damn fast. We'll have a tank some, somewhat quickly. Third goon is already here, so the repair is kicking in. Nexus coming down for Bisu. I did not see a robo just yet, but he's got the gas. Put some put down some tech if he wants. It's going to be four dragoons soon attacking that bunker. Yep, four goons. So we a lot of lost mining time. JYJ, where's his tank? I think this has to be for siege. There's too many dragoons for it to be anything else. It's also straight eBay. You gotta remember JYJ didn't really scout very well, or if at all. So he's gotta account for that this could be DT. Oh, the bunker. Okay. He does unload. That's a trick that some Terrans do to try and uh, get some goons to attack the, the Marines instead of the bunker. But a lot of pros just focus down the bunker, so it doesn't really work that often these days. But it's going to be fast third Nexus for Bisu. And actually, he had already built the Robo when I was talking about his gas. Uh, that is five Dragoons. He can actually snipe that tank if he yeah. with Jason. Careful. Yeah, if he's, if he's channeling his inner, inner Gosu Dark, he may go for it not willing to risk it though it's it's very risky the pros have such good control with their scvs that you could easily get all your goons locked in and caught and at that point it doesn't become a worthwhile trade so i think it's a smart move to just pressure the bunker back off most likely jyj is gonna show siege but it would be smart if he didn't show it um well he has started already um, yep, he's locked down. I don't think like a reverb is going to do too much right now, but the river can be extremely good to contain the bridges at least. So I would like to see that from Bisu. Yep, I agree. Uh, Bisu, still no nat gas. That's, I would assume, probably what the Rax is looking for, is the gas timing at the nat. Of course, now that, he, now that I remember he has a second Rax, he can just go straight into the main and figure out what's going on. But this is going to confirm there's no carriers. We'll also see that there's no support bay, like you said, so no reaver. Man, I was just thinking, like, why Terrans are not doing this more often? Like, it's, it's like okay. only 150 minutes and you are getting all this info. Yeah, it, it's a good idea. I think JY, like, to answer your question directly, the likelihood of a Protoss player attacking your racks with only one goon or two goons is quite low like if 
if he had sent these five goons back, the racks would just immediately die, right? So then you're just wasting 150 minerals. But it is a good idea. Whenever I do get in this situation where I also have a second racks, of course you might as well just lift it across the map. It doesn't help you at all. And again, we're going to have four fact from JYJ. Hopefully he learned his lesson and won't go for a timing because I don't think it's going to work here either. Third base is already kicked in. Massive econ for Bisu and he sees everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a totally different game. So it's, it's, it's really... Oh, five fact. Wow, five factories. Okay. Yeah, so... What, like, does, this can punish the tier expansion from Bisu. Yeah, so five fact, you can do timings with it, but... These days, a lot of players are going into 5-Fact to force Protoss to go a lot of gates, and then they just expand it behind it. So then Protoss gets stuck with a lot of gateway units, which are, you know, not great unless you've got Storm, and then you're facing a Terran who just expanded. Also, you didn't take a fourth base. So it's kind of uh, tough to read exactly what Terran's going to go for. We'll see what Bisu responds with for what JYJ is going to do. He's unseaging. He's acting like he's going to make a move, but I think because there's no vultures, I actually think he's just going to expand. Bisu, Bisu didn't make rivers at all. Not yep. River attack. He's going straight to Citadel. Yep. I think actually straight Citadel is a good move. You go straight into Arbiters. Arbiters are really good versus 5 Fact. Like as soon as you get the Arbiter out, whether you have stasis or not, doesn't really They're matter. Home. Goodbye. Because you've got the uh, invisible units and Terran only has a limited amount of scans. So I think it's smart that JYJ is going to expand behind this. Again, we have this, what looks like weird positioning of the tanks. But I've seen Light do this so many times. It is incredibly effective. Like, you lay a bunch of mines there. Only a couple tanks in the front. And Protoss loses so much stuff if they even try to make any type of move there. The first few vultures moving out on the map. Going to get some mines down. Yeah, when, when Terra would do some move like that, me, if I was playing Protoss, I would be tempted to, yeah. to at least snipe one of the tanks, you know? Yeah. But the reality is, if I do that, I will get so much damage in my units. Yeah, the tanks are, you just bait with one tank in the front and they get splashed by, you know, five tanks behind them, just like that. Uh, more turrets going down. What Light usually does is he builds a bunch of supply depots, actually. But I guess JYJ may be fearing that it shuttles could be on the menu. You gotta remember, in, in the Apocalypse games, Bisu built, like, 20 shuttles. I mean, like, he built so many of them, so... Could come back and help him out, but we know it is Arbiters this time, and I don't think it's you been scanned. defended against this Vulture move. Yeah, this is not gonna do any damage. The Observer... Did it spot the Vultures running towards the left side? I'm not sure, but... Bisu? Is he gonna try and make a move here? Ooh, Cannon's not done! Probes are too far away, though. I don't think this will do much. Speed. Wow, look. Zealot speed is already done. This does signal that Protoss wants to do some type of bust. If he ever sees Terran out of position, he's going to pounce on it. Yep. Well, so far, JYJ is not really showing any thinking about, like, being aggressive. It's more like making units, like you say, to, yeah. to defend. Um... Turns out that Bisu now has a lot of supply that maybe he didn't need this early. Yep, but he is he's still got good tech, he's got Arbiters coming. And I, I don't think he can attack anywhere. The supply is too high. Like JYJ 138, almost 140. Really, really good supply for this point in the game. He's also got a starport done, science facility coming, I'm sure. So 2-1, even though it's gonna be delayed compared to, you know, years Ooh. past. Oh, that's actually, a, massive attacks. There, yeah, there's not that many mines. There's no SimCity either. The Vulture's out of position. This could be the move that Bisu's looking for. He forces a complete lift. This is a really good move from Bisu. Lost mining time for sure for JYJ. Oh, he's going to commit? Really? There's no mines, so it, it makes sense. Look at the tanks. could splash each other. JYJ desperately trying to focus fire these tanks. That's why you see all the tanks changing uh, targets here. The Zealots are getting melted. Supplies plummet for Bisu. The Vultures are coming back to save the day. I would say that was not the move that Bisu was looking for. He takes down a decent amount of tanks, but he loses almost his entire army for it. Um, It was almost like an equal trade here. Um, Ooh. Now JYJ is free to go, man. Yeah, well, 
it looks like it could be a strong timing with the 1-1, but the Arbiter's out, and now you're gonna be attacking across the bridge. Also, you gotta remember, these goons on the right side, they did not all die, so there's flank potential. He did take down the shuttle though, so shuttle bomb, not on the menu. It will take a while for that to happen, but the command center is lifted, so still no three base econ for JYJ. Uh, this feels like it could be a misstep. Look at this smart move, send in just one solid at a time. Goodbye, I've seen JYJ using scans over and over, so he, he can have that many. Yeah, exactly. It, it's hard to <laughs> deal with arbiters when you're only on two comsats. Oh, look at this. Bisu, if he sharks around to the left side, he could set up almost a 360 surround on these units that are way too far forward. Vultures are going to shut down this fourth base again. I wonder what Bisu's waiting for. These are isolated tanks. I guess he just doesn't feel like he's got enough to jump on it. JYJ is actually using scans without even like needing it. So, Bisu, why is Bisu not actually like using arbiters now? Yeah, I thought he was gonna try and stasis that army and go and blow it up, but instead, JYJ is actually gonna be able to retreat, and these goons overstayed their welcome. Now he's obligated to fight. He's gonna try and take down a tank, but he doesn't even get one. Now vultures from the top side. All these goons are gonna die. Yeah, and the, the, I, I don't understand why Bisu like took so long for, for him. Now he loses that army for free. Um, oh. Yeah, those goons, pretty expensive, right? Seven goons or something? G Bisu, I don't think can make an attack here anymore. Yes, he has an Arbiter, but he only has one stasis. He only has one recall. Oh, draw a chip, draw a chip. Yep, I see it. He's going for the third base overlooking the ledge. By the way, no third gas for a Bisu here. So he's really prioritizing, you know, gateway units. He's not going to have, you know, six Arbiters or something insane. because he just can't build them. A Vulture drop. Okay. He's going to rack up a lot of probe kills. He doesn't that many, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, not as many as I was expecting it to be. Something got sniped at bottom left. Looks like there was a Vulture that popped a probe. So the fifth base gets denied. JYJ is almost even in supply. His tank count is really large at this point, and I think he's going to be moving to try and take his fourth base now. What about Grace? Yeah, Terran with Grace. Terran, I think, is 1 1 right now. 2 2 should be very close, like really, really close. Maybe like within the next 30 seconds, I'm guessing. So it's going to be a massive power spike. However, Bisu is moving towards the right side. JYJ is also on the right side, and this is a really hard angle. For Terran to make work. Yeah, he's had, yeah, he has two stasis. Stasis is really powerful. Well, tanks are really powerful in this position. Visu needs to wait for JYJ to come up and then stasis. Oh, is he gonna recall? He's going no for way. it. Are there turrets? Oh, he one shot. I can't believe it survived and it gets in. You can see that the armory is no longer spinning, so I'm gonna guess plus two kicked in just barely in the nick of time. Oh, whoa, this is just going to trigger an immediate counter. I don't know about this. A stasis on I the ramp. Like, I don't like this at all. He could use two stasis and probably do really good damage in that tier, but well. That is. Now he's. Oh, go ahead. No, no, now he's in a base trade situation. Yeah. Um, base trade situation. I don't think Protoss army can beat Terran's army right now. Protoss needs to run. He needs to just run, 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 and try and buy as much time as possible. Okay, at the same time, he's attacking the third base. I didn't realize that that army's still there. The the army in the in the main base is still alive. JYJ is kind of getting picked apart here. The army it did not attack the natural and third base that quickly. It's going to be hard to get over the bridges. I think oh third base is dead. You can do a sandwich here to this army. Yeah, vultures are out of position now. The vul There's no D matrix here. Tanks are isolated. Bisu collapsing on all sides. By the way, there are tanks that shut down Bisu's fourth base, but the entire army gets crushed. And that means Bisu has a 70 supply lead now. He is in prime position to take this game. Wait, he even killed the CC? Yeah. He killed the armory. He killed a million depots. The units are locked up on the ramp. This army got blasted. The Arbiter's still alive. Nothing going in favor of JYJ. And Bisu should be momentarily uh, seeing the GG coming out from JYJ.
Oh, I remember this move from Jadon as well, blocking the ramp yeah. like that. One million units. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Bisu Iko is fantastic here. I I don't think like Jawaje can really like win this game anymore. Yeah, 94 to 150. Also, Proros Econ is bananas. He's got four bases. Five fifth base just came up. I don't think the Arbiters died either. So, you know, a, a second recall could be coming. It's the sticking supplies. Yeah, he's yeah. There's still a goon killing the supply depot. <laughs> It's crazy. And look at that energy, 110. He only needs about 45. Oh, well, we're not gonna get to 45 seconds because this is most likely the last attack. Bisu coming in here, where's the stasis? He's gonna get, no, he doesn't even need stasis. Look at this, he's just running through this. Zealot's gonna kill every tank. See you later, GG. And that means Bisu, he is one game away from making it into the round of eight. Oh, what a game, man. Bisu, Bisu playing some crazy games today. Yeah, he turned up the heat in this game. He was on point. Uh, I thought he overstepped with that big attack where, you know, they kind of traded armies, but his recall was fantastic. And obviously the stasis on the ramp just triggered JYJ into a, a bad move there. Like, he lost his third base, he lost his main, he lost his whole army in the center of the map. The game got completely turned on its head. And JYJ now... What can he do? It's going to be, what is it, Citadel or Retro as the second map? He needs to get retro, it together here. Retro. retro? Okay. Well, this is a good TDP map, so I, I do have good expectations here, but Citadel, it can be tough. Um, I'm, I'm not really too sure about that. Uh, I mean, about the, the TBP side. Because it's true that on Citadel, you, you do you have almost the mina only so easy to take and to defend that don't you like auto take the four expansion as well like isn't that like super super easy for a turn player yeah in theory it is easy to get four bases but citadel has like an open main recalls really strong there i see a lot of games where best plays and a lot of times he gets like three quarters of the map uh, sometimes terran still wins because terran is just insanely strong but you know, it can snowball really hard when Protoss gets Econ like that. But you are right, 4 base Terran is absolutely crazy. It is somewhat easy to get on Citadel, but we've got to get there first because Retro is our second map and players are ready. So let's see if Bisu can close it out or if JYJ starts staging his comeback. All right, in the bottom left, is this the game that gets him into the round of eight? It's Bisu, and in the bottom right, looking to crawl his way back to a 1-1 series, we've got JYJ. Well, the last game he did a proxy gate. I don't think we are going to see that in this one, but we could see 11 Nexus. We could see a fast Nexus here, really strong uh, build in TVP or in PVT. However, JYJ did get good spawns here. If it is a 12 Nexus, it's horizontal spawn, really close rush distance. Uh, but Retro can get tricky. You know, you do have to go up those uh, pathways. You could buy some time with a probe or a zealot real quick. And finally, we see a Bisu fan there. Take Sheen, which means Bisu God, which is what he wrote on his sign there. JYJ Depot coming down. And Bisu Pylon in the main. So you're right, not going to be any forward gate this time um with these positions um it's going to get tricky here for jyj with the with the opening he's been doing the last two games right what opening the gas like the four four factories four factories oh the four factories four factories it, it gets you a lot of units so i think four facts will get him his third base really easy at bottom middle but it will be hard to push. It's kind of hard to go up the high ground, down the low ground, into an arc. So I don't think... Uh, so again, I think if he goes 4-pack or 5-pack, it's just to take a base. I do not expect a timing. This time around, I think this was a 12 gas from JYJ. Bisu just doing a normal opener here. Gate gas. We'll have to see if he builds any zealots. I have a feeling it's not going to be any zealots, just based on that gateway positioning. 
and a CV on the move. Where will he go? If he goes horizontal, he's going to be loving it. If he goes vertical, then he is loving it. He's, first. He got lucky. Also, with these positions, I, I think like Bisu is going to be happy to go reverse. Yeah, reaver can be good. Directly into the natural. Could get some good juicy shots off. And Probe actually went for a cross scout. Interesting scout pattern from Protoss there. Will not see either. It will, will, will not intercept the SCV at all, so he has no idea what direction it came from. And gate's done. So it is just straight Dragoon. Will he go for Goon Nexus or will he get range? Is really what we're waiting to see. This is going to be a scouting last now, you can yep, change last direction time. to the left and now he need to go to. He probably think he like go top right again, so who knows? Yeah. A bit unlucky for BC fans out there that this is going to be a really terrible scout timing. I guess he will feel somewhat relief that he's not running into a 14cc again, because if Terran gets away with a 14cc versus this opener, it's uh, really hard for Protoss to come back from. JYJ's factory is done. Instant add-on. Okay. Kind of... It's funny to say, kind of old school, because these days, almost every game, Terran players open straight Vulture, but he's going to go in immediate add-on. Probably still going to get mines, but it could be for a fast tank. Common center for Yawa Jane. Um, I'm surprised this SCV is still scouting and getting info, man. Yeah, and getting all this intel gives JYJ the ability to not have to build a bunker. Terran's getting away with absolute murder here. Skipped Vulture. I actually think he skipped Vulture again on the second uh, chance. And now he's going straight tank with no bunker. Absolutely crazy. Crazy green. Okay, at this point, you need a bunker, man. Like, range is about to kick in. <laughs> oh, DT as a follow-up in game two where everything matters. He's going to risk going for a DT play. He's saying to JYJ, I can win the game immediately. I'm going to catch you off guard. It could also be DT drop, I guess. Wow, DT drop. Yeah, it could be. I think, uh, I think he just put down the Robo right now. I, I think so. Yep, Citadel, Robo. So it is going to be DT drop. However, JYJ has been very good about building turrets when he doesn't get all the intel he needs. Uh, so I yeah, do... Yeah, he's being careful always making turrets in the national. Yeah, so I think most likely this won't catch JYJ off guard, but you never know. SCV did scout a lot, like you were saying. So maybe he's thinking that no way he's going to go for a d delayed DT drop like this. Is there an academy? I'm trying to see. Uh, I don't think an academy is being built. Being built, eBay is definitely not started just yet. That's the second factory. Ooh, young Zarg, it's getting dicey. There is no way he's skipping. No, but he can't. He can't skip that anyway. Like, he need to 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 make preventive uh, turrets to for the servers and all of that. Yeah, he does need to definitely get his eBay up to prevent that. But sometimes when you're making a push, which I think this is going to be, I think this is going to be like a fourth tank push. Sometimes you forget to build your eBay. But of course, as I say that, eBay has started. Okay, observatory. That's a lot of gas. DT drop plus observatory. All right, we'll see how this works out. A bit confused with Biso Bill right now um because funny enough he, if he just like send it is straight to the terran base he, he could have done some damage ebay's not done ebay's not done these dts look how fast the shuttle gets across the map if he unloads at the natural we may have jyj tapping out turrets late it is late he sees it coming he thinks it's a reaver it's not i don't see any bullshit or any mines so this uh, is going to do damage no matter what oh scd's body blocking what? It actually gets completed. In the main, it's going to complete, but there's no turrets at the bottom side. So I still think the DT will deal some damage, but it's less than I was anticipating. Also, whatever that building is at the bottom side, that's going to get canceled. It's an armory. So catching the armory is going to be fantastic also. 
need to be careful to not lose the DT to splash damage. Yep. You are definitely right about that. Double turret at the natural. What is this? Five turrets being built overall? Lots of... Oh, he might kill the tank. Okay, losing the second DT really does hurt. Because now he can't deny the gas. He can't just be annoying in the mineral line anymore. But he will, you know, poke, I guess, this factory and add-on. Get some marines. But actually, the marines don't to really help Terran at all. So it's not a big loss. You know, DT openings are one of the most expensive in Proto vs. Terran. Um, do you think that, like, he has done enough with this DT opening? I actually do think he did enough damage. I think he disrupted the mining, and he gets out, and I think he forced enough turrets. I think he denied the gas. He also denied the armory. I think, overall, this was a, a win for, for Bisu. Also, because JYJ doesn't have scans yet, like, it's not like he can immediately counterattack across the map and punish this. So Bisu's going to be able to get his Arbiters out really quickly and be going into the mid game in a good spot. And now he's going to get his third base coming up. So I think everything is going really well for Bisu. <laughs> he's coming back with the DT. Yeah, well, why not? Just keep the army back. As long as he keeps the army back. I mean, he, he's... Gold. What is going on? He's going to spend top? No. This was a mistake, I think. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm kind of... Okay, there's the pylons and Nexus coming up. Wow! Ah, Arbiter Nayoken is so fast! Yeah, uh, Arbiter is going to be a really good follow-up here. Bisu has not that many units, which is why you saw him you know, using that shuttle to keep the units back. Because one of the weaknesses of DT drop is you just don't have a lot of stuff. So you can be vulnerable to counterattacks. But JYJ doesn't have that many scans, so as soon as the Arbiter comes out... What is JYJ doing? I think he's going to okay. try and rush a fast third base. But the problem, like I said, is he doesn't have a lot of scans. This DT... I, I heard a scan go off. He may not even have an additional scan. Use the DT, man. Come on, send the DTs to the tanks. Well, I don't know what... Okay, there we go. He is just going to set up for, I think, a third base. Yeah, DT is going to come in here and snipe some SCVs. And it gets away. JYJ fans, it's not it's looking good. JYJ scanned the, the, the Arbiter early on. Uh, I'm not sure if he scanned the Arbiter early on. I think he probably suspects Arbiter because Arbiter is a com common follow-up to this. But if you suspect Arbiter, you need big econ. I guess maybe he thinks that he's taken so much damage he can't play a mid-game. Because look at this, the DTs are just baiting out all the energy. Soon, there's going to be... Permanent cloak with the Arbiter because the Arbiter is not going to die. There's only one Goliath here. There's no way the Arbiter dies. He's making a good amount of turrets. So this push is very scary. Yeah, actually. It, yeah it is actually very strong. 130 to 90. There's no speed on the Zealots. The Vultures aren't here with the army though. JYJ, he needed to rally his stuff. You can see he just moved his camera over there to send everything at his rally point. But it's too late. He's going to lose all of his tanks. Okay. It's fantastic for Visu cleaning all this Yeah, time. he crushes through this. You know, supplies still look like Terran's okay at 118 to 70, but the reality is, is this is not a good situation. All the tanks are going to die. All the Zealots are going to die, but there's just still so much Protoss. And also remember, the Arbiter's out in like any moment now. I call me crazy, but that Arbiter, is, he took forever to, to, to get out. Look at this GG even before the Arbiter. GG, Bisum, next round. <laughs> yeah, and, and yes. I was thinking the same thing when you mentioned that. I was like, dude, where's your Arbiter? Shouldn't it be done by now? But it's one of the longest building units in the game. I think it's a minute and 40 seconds. And Bisum made these last two games look pretty easy. Crushed him on this map. Dark Origin, I guess it was kind of dicey after his one massive attack. But then his recall just completely blew the game open. So well done from him. You know, at the early, at the beginning of this uh, group, you know, his first couple games looked kind of shaky, but re he recovered really well. I mean, the, the last game on Retro, that was phenomenal play with the DTs, just forcing yeah. scans, forcing scans. Well, to be, to be honest, in the end, he didn't even, even use the Arbiter. So, but, but it was like, it was some fantastic play he pulled. He even saved the DT in the main with the shuttle, so... Um, overall, it was a very solid play.
yep and man that turret just slightly out of position slightly late really cost jyj also not having an academy for so long really hurt jyj this is really the uh uh, yeah, I was I was watching to see if JYJ was all in or not. Like I was be as he was making this move, I was like, he must have cut SCVs here to go for this. And it is true, he did. He's down to forty one, kind of low. But this was really the the deal breaker here. Is he forgot to send his freaking vultures? I think with the vultures, he might have actually held. Because look, there's no observer. Like if there's a minefield here, a lot of the zealots would have gotten blown up. Yeah, okay. not only that, like there is there are so many torrents that arbiter. I mean, it's good, but it, it's going to be dangerous to 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 for Bisu to to deal with this uh, timing. Yeah, though I, I I don't even think Bisu needed to make this attack. The Arbiter would have he could have waited for the Arbiter and probably been been fine. But when Terran overextends this much with just tanks, you gotta kill it because this opportunity doesn't happen that often. So well done from Bisu. He sees the moment and makes it through into the round of eight. So he's gonna be feeling really good about that. Or maybe not. Bisu winning at Terra, uh, Protoss versus Terra in 2024. I mean, this is this is great. Yep, he did really well today. So him and Solki make it through, which is good news, I guess, because we had so many Terrans coming into the round of 16 uh, that you were thinking maybe we wouldn't have any Zergs or Protoss. Well, maybe not that extreme, but we needed to get through some of these Zergs and Protoss from the get-go and whittle down the amount of Terrans. Now only six remain. We're getting into the interview with Bisu here. I'm sure he's very happy to make it through. Well, you know, a lot of players ask me for predictions before the groups, and I don't make them anymore because they're always jinxed. But what about you, Eon Zerg? Did this group go according to plan, you think? Uh, 100%. <laughs> 100%, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. That, that was actually my... My prediction for this group. Actually, my prediction was Soul Key JYJ. Um, I, I think JYJ is really good these days, but Bisu, for whatever reason, turned it up a notch, ends up taking him out. Bisu was a lot of picks for a lot of foreigners. I know Jae Yoon has him as like a, a big pick, TT1 also, I think. And he looked good, at least in the last couple games. Well, to be fair, the first game was super shaky. Yeah. So I was like wondering, like, Okay, but this Bisu we are getting today is probably not the same Bisu I have, I have seen in the, in the past weeks or whatever. Um, and then the games against Solki, they were like super shaky as well. Uh, but I mean, we can give some credit to Solki there with the mind games. Um, yeah, the Blitz map has yeah. a lot of weird builds we've been seeing on in ASO. We had the Proxy Factory, now we've got this hidden hatch. Man, ladder is going to be a clown fiesta for the next few weeks. People are going to be like paranoid about scouting the entire map because it seems like literally anything could be anywhere. Like, uh, what the heck was that hatch man at the mineral only? Well, now you can let me tell you something. This is pro gamer level. Yeah. Like on ladder, a Protoss player sees something like that, he's just making two ten cannons and he doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh. Remember, like the player brought us some time, one time, and he 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 wasn't able to scout anything, and I was like, okay, um, this guy has to be freaking out. Like, I kill already four workers he sent to a scout or whatever. He's got to be like, making a lot of uh, defense. And then I go there, and he only made like one cannon in the in the wall, and that was it. Yeah, and you feel you feel like an idiot. You're like, what? Uh, but, you know, sometimes when you get that far behind, like, the only thing you can really do is just take an extreme gamble to catch up. Um, but, yeah, I know that feeling. Where you, where you just, you watch the replay and you just think to yourself, like, what, dude? Like, how, you can't, how could you possibly do that? You can never do that. The only I was asking myself is, like, why I spend 4.50 APN trying to kill all these workers if this guy's just, like, going to play like that? <laughs> yeah, that too. A lot of effort for very minimal uh, return. Well, we've got Group B tomorrow. Let me uh, bring it up, I guess, on Liquipedia. It's another stacked group. Like, I think this season has one of the most stacked, like, groups and, like, like across the board groups. 
Uh, I'm Googling now. Yeah, I believe group is insane this, in this ASL, to be honest. And we have a snow this season, finally. <laughs> so, this is really, it's a good scene. Yeah, so group B tomorrow. Pretty nuts. It's mini. And we've got Barracks, who actually looked really good in the round of 24. You know, maybe finally it could be a breakthrough for Barracks. Then we've got Royal, another ASL champion. And then we've got Hero, somebody that you just put him in the round of four, because that's just what he does every season. Yeah, if we can be sure about something, is that Hero is going to be in the semis. Yeah, 100%. He just doesn't ever not make the semi. I wonder how many times he's made it, like, at least round of eight. It feels like I, I don't remember like ever seeing him lose in the round of 16. And if, because I say that, of course, tomorrow he's going to lose. So that's just how it is. Imagine, Ayokan, only like it, only one ser like all the way to the championship. Sometimes it's about the, the quality and not the quantity. Well, isn't that a fact? I know that about watching enough BSL games that as long as me, who's in the tournament, Aaron's got a chance. And as long as Bonneth and DeWalt are on the product side, Protoss has got a chance, and if we've got Eon Zerg or True Touch, Zerg's got a chance. So I know that. Man, I thought you were you were about to tell like they have no chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got no chance, man. No, Zergs. <laughs> Zergs have gotten good results in BSL. You've got the championship. True Touch gotten a lot. Waiting for the Ziki championship. Yeah, Ziki. The Ziki is the foreigner god. I know, man. He was playing Stormgate for a while, and then he just showed up and, like, just blasted a bunch of foreigners, like misters and stuff, in some of the BSL tournaments. <laughs> just reminding these players, like, hey, may not be playing right now, but I'm still good. We're getting a rundown of how today went. As we know, Sulky beat Mong, Bisu beat JYJ, Sulky beat Bisu with some clever builds. Then JYJ beats Mong in the losers match, eliminating him, and then Bisu taking down JYJ once again 2-0 and that means we've got Protoss and Zerg through no Terrans just yet like yes yeah. when I saw this group I was I was like a bit worried for Sulky but I guess everything went according to the plan it sure did definitely the proxy hatchery build went according to plan I don't know about his Citadel build if, if he had that planned He's on a whole nother level where you go mutas, does no damage, and then you build double hydrogen, and it still works out. Like I said, this is tomorrow's group, Group B, Mini Barracks Royal Hero. This is a crazy, crazy group. And actually, I think a lot of player players would kind of write Barracks out of this group, but Barracks in past ASLs has been playing a lot of 5-facts, a lot of 6-facts, and 5-fact is the meta right now. So he could make an upset here it's of course going to be an uphill battle because all these players are superstars in the scene but i could see barracks making something happen tomorrow jesus and you can you, you are glazing barracks so much like bro it's mini royal and hero in this group like this I'm, is like the, 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 i know <laughs> it's like the top of the top i'm just saying it could happen right Barracks okay. is really good, but it, you are right. It like doesn't we get already, any like, You are rooting so much for him. I already know he's not making it. Yeah, he's like, not no going to make it. Yeah, we know that. But you got to root for him, right? Because you want to see some fresh faces. I don't always want, even though I like Mini, I don't always want to see Mini in the finals. Or I like Hero, right? He's consistently in the top four, but I would like to see someone else in the top four. You got to get some new you know, faces. I disagree a bit, with, a, a bit with you in this one because Min is one of the most fun players to watch in StarCraft. He he definitely is fun to watch. Sometimes I watch his stream and he's just doing the craziest stuff. Like he'll start building Archons versus Terran and I'm like, dude, nothing happened in the game. Archons are horrible. Like vultures obliterate them. Tanks obliterate them. What are you doing? And he makes it work. He's definitely got crazy strategies. He also... I'm not going to say revolutionized Reaver play because we know Snow is the one that did that, but he builds Reavers like 20 minutes into the game. He's still microing him. He's still effective with them. Like he, he makes everything work. I know something he actually revolutionized is the shield battery. The shield battery? This guy, yeah, this is the king of shield batteries. 
Is he really? I don't. I feel like I haven't seen him use shield batteries that often, but I guess I'm missing out. You never seen him like doing these proxy builds with ten shield batteries in the opponent's main and and like what? You never see that? No, no way. No. Oh my. What God. versus what race? Terran? Protoss? Yeah, the, against Terran, against Protoss, like <laughs> the king of shield batteries. Okay, well I. I've never seen it. Apparently, I'm missing out. I need to watch some more mini. He pulls that out in Pro League also, or is this just ladder or what? Oh, I have seen it everywhere, Nayoka, on ladder okay. and in, in, in Pro Leagues. I, he's a master of shield batteries. Well, I guess I need to check out his, uh, his Afrika or YouTube channel. But we just got the signal that the cast is done. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll, I'll be back with Group B tomorrow along with Gypsy. Big shout out to Eon Zerg to help cast today. Of course, always treat to cast with you. And I'm glad that your favorite player, Sulky, made out. We've got a Zerg into the round of eight. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. See you.